усміхнеться доля, згинуть наші вороженьки, як роса на сонці, запанує ми, ми браття, у свої Доброго дня, шановні посли та представники посольств. Доброго дня, дорогі партнери, наші друзі та високоповажні гості. Good day, honorable ambassadors and representatives of embassies, dear partners and guests of the festival. Сьогодні ми тут зібралися в ці важкі, складні для нас всіх часи. В часи, коли в Україні війна, у світі відбуваються глобальні катаклізми, і не дивлячись на що, я вам дуже вдячний, що ви сьогодні тут. І я вітаю вас всіх на відкритті Ukrainian Day in Moldova 2022. Today, in the difficult times for all of us, in the times of war and transformation, I welcome you all to the opening of the UDM Festival. Сьогодні ми зібралися тут не лише тому, що культура, звичаї об'єднують Україну і Молдову. Не лише тому, що ці дві країни об'єднує сторіччя, дружби і партнерства. Не лише тому, що вона спільний вектор європейської інтеграції. А й у тому числі для того, щоб нагадати всім, що в 20-му сторіччі на європейському континенту, а європейський континент охопила найбільша у світі війна та гуманітарна криза. Сьогодні ми зібралися тут. Not only because we are united by the culture of Ukraine and Moldova, not only because we are united in so many partnerships, common tradition, the European vector. Today we are gathered here because for the first time since the 20th century, the European continent is engulfed in the largest continental war. In this year, only in Ukraine, the future of the future of the democratic world. Світу до вільно демократичного світу, до котрого прагнемо ми всі разом з вами, до котрого прагне сама Молдова. This year in Ukraine, the destiny and future of the free democratic world, which inspires all of us and to which Moldova aspires, is decided. Рік тому ми провели перший український культурний фестиваль UDM, і навіть не думали, що через рік простір нашого фестивалю стане знаковою платформою або площадкою, майданчиком, котре об'єднає відущих міжнародних та національних експертів з Молдови та України. A year ago, we held a small Ukrainian ethnocultural festival here, at this place. And we could not even imagine that in such a short time, UDM will become a think tank, uniting leading state bodies and international actors of Moldova and Ukraine. Нас всіх об'єднує добродійність. Нас всіх об'єднує бажання допомогти народу України, самій Україні, стоючи поруч, пліч о пліч, в одному строю. We are all united by generosity and the sincere desire to help Ukraine, standing side by side with Ukrainian nation. Я від широкого серця хочу подякувати уряду, парламенту Республіки Модово, всім міжнародним партнерам, а в першу чергу, напевно, або головне, народу Республіки Молдови, який все зробив, щиро, тепло зустрічав біженців і продовжить це робити. 
низкий уклін і щиро подяка. I sincerely thank the government of Republic of Moldova, all the national and international organizations and our partners, and most of all, uh, the nation of Moldova that opened their hearts for the Ukrainian refugees and are helping us in all this crisis. I sincerely thank you all. І ще раз від щиро серця я всіх всіх вас вітаю на відкритті Ukrainian Day Moldova 2022 і хочу сказати, що сьогодні територія арткор це територія вільних людей, це територія гарного настрою і це територія культури України та Молдови. Дякую за увагу. Uh, we thank you all for being here, and uh, as uh, Dmitry mentioned, the art court today is the territory of free people and of uh, good disposition, good mood, and most of all, freedom. Thank you all for being here. <clears throat> and I pass the floor to the co-organizer and reliable partner, Senior Emergency Coordinator of UNHCR, Ben Chad Blank. Thank you, thank you very much. This is uh, the greeting, just to the audience. Okay, 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 thank you. All right, uh, good morning, ladies uh, and gentlemen. This is my honor and pleasure to be uh, present today and be part of the, the panelists uh, of the, this important day, Ukrainian day in Moldova. Uh, I understand, so it's just an introductory world just to, to greet and thanks for the invitation. I'm very proud to represent the United Nations today and be present and I hope that in the panelists we have uh, intensive and clear uh, discussion around all the situation in Moldova. And so, very glad to be here and thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ban, for uh, your words of support, as well as, for the, as well as for the mission that the Office of United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in Moldova is carrying up. Thanks to your work, thanks to your work, not only we have found reliable partners, but every Ukrainian in Moldova could feel your care and preemptory help. I give the floor now to the Honorable Ambassador of Ukraine in Moldova, Marko Shevchenko. Uh, hello and welcome. Uh, 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 thank you so much for inviting us here today. I'm glad to be here and I would like to thank all the organizers and partners that made this happen. Я хотів би продовжити думку шановного пана Дмитра Лекарцева, який, відкриваючи сьогоднішній захід, сказав: uh, I would like to continue uh, the, uh, the idea of uh, Dmitry Lekarcev that uh, while opening the today's event said що коли вперше минулого року Український день Молдові відбувся і задумали, що він буде регулярним, ніхто не міг уявити, що наступний рік буде проводитись фестиваль у таких складних умовах в Україні. That the last year when UDM was first held, uh, no one uh, and when uh, we first thought about that uh, this uh, event will be a yearly event, no one could uh, think that uh, the next event will be held in such difficult circumstances for Ukraine. Справді, Україна переживає не найкращі часи, можливо, найскладніші в своїй сучасній історії. Uh, Ukraine is really uh, going through difficult times right now, maybe one of the most difficult in its history. Але якщо подивитися в глибину, глибину століть, то дуже важко знайти в історії України пері, історичний період, який би можна було назвати легким періодом. But if you look at the long history that Ukraine has, uh, you will, it, it is hard to find a period in, in Ukraine's history that could be called easy. І uh, тому uh, працювати в складних умовах, це вже стає доброю українською традицією. 
So working in difficult times is already a good tradition for Ukrainians. І я щасливий, що Національний конгрес українців Молдови, всі партнери і коспонсори поділяють наші наші політ наші підходи і підтримують нас у цьому. And I'm glad that uh, the Congress of Ukrainians in Moldova and all of our, our uh, partners uh, are with us in this, and I'm thankful for that. І звичайно ж, повертаючись до власне українського дня в Молдові, хотів би звернути увагу на одну річ. And going back to the Ukrainian Day in Moldova, I would like to point out one thing. Як показала українська нещодавня трагічна історія, на жаль, українські підходи будувати добросусідські відносини із одним із великим північним сусідом виявилися не мали успіху. As the recent events proved that the uh... Ukraine, that Ukraine trying to build a good relationship with its uh, northern neighbor proved to be not a very good idea. Is there a northern neighbor? Moldova також намагається будувати добросусідські відносини не лише з своїми сусідами, а з усіма країнами регіону, в тому числі з Російською Федерацією. Moldova is also trying to have good relationship with all of its neighbors, and that includes Russian Federation. Наскільки ці зусилля успішними є, вирішує лише молдовські уряди, молдовський народ. And that is the call that only the Moldovan government and Moldovan uh, populace could make. Важливо лише будуючи хороші відносини з з Російською Федерацією, не забувати розвивати власну культуру і власну країну. Uh, it is important while building these good relations uh, to never forget about one's own culture and one's own interests. На жаль, до недавнього часу в Молдові традиційно склалася не без допомоги деяких урядів в минулому, склалася ситуація, коли лише дві мови мали щастя розвиватися вільно і з підтримкою, з рядовою підтримкою. Uh, following the recent Moldova's history and especially some of its governments, uh, only two languages uh, have found development in the uh, Moldovan society. І українська не входила до цього числа. And Ukrainian language was not one of those two. Незважаючи на те, що українці є першою по кількості національною меншиною після титульної нації, після молдован. Even though uh, Ukrainian, Ukrainians are the second nationality after the uh, main nationality, after Moldovans, um, in Moldova. Але, на жаль, через політику деяких попередніх урядів, значна частина українців в Молдові поповнили ряди російськомовного населення. Uh, but sadly, following the policies of some of the Moldovan's previous governments, uh, Ukrainian population of Moldova had turned to uh, using Russian as its main language. І я щиро вдячний ще раз, вже третє, щиро вдячний організаторам Українського дня в Молдові, що вони вирішили проводити цей фестиваль на регулярній основі і таким чином почати міняти цю ситуацію. And I am once again thankful to the Congress of Ukrainians in Moldova that they are trying to work with the situation by making uh, events such as today uh, a yearly event. Це, мені здається, правильний хід думок, це правильний хід подій, і я переконаний, в цьому плані нас чекає успіх. I think this will be a very positive development and I'm sure we will find success in this. І на завершення я за цим хочу подякувати всім партнерам і спонсорам цього заходу, які дозволили нам зробити цей маленький, але важливий крок вперед. So once again, I am thankful to all, all of the uh, organizers, partners uh, and sponsors of today's event that made it happen and uh, that uh, let us uh, proceed with this plan. Дякую гарно і бажаю лише успіхів в сьогоднішньому насиченому різними активностями дні. Thank you and good luck today. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, we are honored by your presence and we are infinitely grateful to the, for the support that the uh, Embassy of Ukraine provides to the National Congress of Ukrainians of Moldova. Cultural diplomacy is the key to strengthening cooperation with foreign partners, which opens the door to give Ukraine the support that it so badly needs right now. And I give the floor to Laura Hruby, Deputy Chief of Mission of the U.S. Embassy in Moldova.
Thank you so much. Okay, that's great. Okay, perfect. perfect. Dear friends, I'm so pleased to be here today to celebrate uh, Ukrainian Day in Moldova and to celebrate Ukraine's rich cultural heritage as well as the really important links between Ukraine and Moldova. I think I speak for all of us when I say it was really moving to see the impressive response and reaction by the people civil society and the government of Moldova to support and protect and stand by Ukrainians following Russia's unprovoked war. And here, right where we stand today, is an amazing example of that. Um, here at ArtCorps, which was founded by USAID to promote creativity in the arts, uh, many, many refugees, including their children, were welcomed in to provide support in uh, very difficult days. And we're so proud to, to have seen that response. We're also very pleased to be supporting a program uh, hosted and sponsored by, um, by ArtCorps that brings together Moldovan and Ukrainian entrepreneurs who are working to improve the world through innovation. This is just one example of the ways that we can um, really find benefit when we all put our heads together and bring, um, build on those connections that we have. I think today is also an opportunity to, um, and a reminder of the importance of civil society. We see the wonderful work that the National Congress of Ukrainians in Moldova is doing to promote intercultural ties and to explore additional avenues for cooperation. So, you know, not a day goes by that our hearts and our thoughts are not with those in Ukraine who are suffering under Russia's aggression and occupation. But also, not a day goes by that we're not inspired by the strength and the spirit of the Ukrainian people in response to these very difficult circumstances. And that spirit, that cultural heritage is what we're here today to celebrate. So I'm so pleased to be here as part of the um, these festivities and discussions this morning. Slava Ukraini. Uh, Ms. Gruby, as Ukrainians, uh, we thank the U.S. and your person for the unprecedented support of Ukraine, as well as citizens of Moldova in their struggle for uh, democracy and freedom. And I give the floor to Nikolai Radica, advisor to the Prime Minister on Human Rights and Interethnic Relations. Bună ziua. Bună ziua, dragi prieteni. O să încerc ca un mesaj să l spun în limba ucraineană și îmi cer scuze pentru accentul, dacă nu Și anume ne druzi, ia vitai diaspora ta ucrainescu spilnotu, providenie în ciu, ciu zahodu ia ki prolivaie bișe svitla na culturu, tradiții ценности, да як да тудова то ценности у просувания этнично размаяти в наши крайни та допомагая у процесе разбудови дружных стосунків с усима с пижвитями народов, як социальная сготованность. Молдова молода краина, яка рухается демократичным шляхом, воно припустив по повагу до прав людини та особливо хороше відносини з нашими сусідами, включая с Украину. Может перевод или нет? А. Зажалем, ситуация в Украине нас друже филует. И мы категорично засуждаем российскую агрессию, еще не может выпривать вину. Мы знаем, что это означает. И первым кроком было надать гуманитарную допомогу и принять всех, кто знает, что притулок у нас в крайне. Сегодня мы имеем понад 70 тысяч осіб, як приїхали з України та перебувають у Молдови. І понад 
520 тысяч осіб пришли через Молдову за цей період. Уряд створив унікальний центр кризового менеджменту, який запланував більше можливостей для них, людей, для таких як проживання, харчування, транспорт, працевлаштування та доступ до освіти тощо. Як приклад з 2000 дітей, які прибувають у школі, 30 дітей навчалися. Більше 700 осіб були працевлаштовані в сфері праці, а самі в містах Кишинев, Бельцей, Мунгейн, Кагул та інших районах. Це означає, що це початок підтримки процесу інтеграції в наші громади. Сьогодні Республіка Молдова завершила роботу над доброю законодавчою базою, яка підтримує етнічні меншини в процесі соціальної, економічної та навіть і політичної інтеграції. Про це також йде в закони про права осіб, які належать до національних меншин та правовий статус інших організацій. Вони можуть об'єднуватися та створювати організації для сприяння створенню необхідності необходимих умов для збереження, розвідку та вираження етнічної, культурної, мовної та релігіозної самобутності осіб, які належать до національних меншин. Наприклад, на сьогодні в Агенції міжнаціональної відністю зарегістрировано понад 11 культурних організацій української громади на національній рівні, як виходить до складу етнокультурної ради при Агенції міжнаціональних відносин, а також багато при Агенції міжнаціональних відносин. Місцевий рівень, через який луний голос громади. Українська громада протягом багатьох років мала представників в різних структурах, виконувачів влади, парламенті тощо. Республіка Молдова, як частична Раді Європи, ратифікувала низку європейську документів і конвенцій. І ситуація меншин постійно розглядається через різні комісії та Раді. Зараз в Молдові веде переговори щодо підписання харті регіональних мов. Я хочу побажати вам успіху і особливо організаторам за організацію цього заходу. Бажаю всім здоров'я та міру. Дякую дуже багато. І ваша українська мова була дуже красива. Дякую. Дякую. I would like to give the floor now to Mr. Wazo Nantoy, uh, who is the head of the friendship group between Moldova and Ukraine in Parliament of Moldova. Дякую. Добрий день, шановні пані і панове, екселенсіс, стимати домну амбасадор. По-перше, я хочу висловити таку головну думку. Ми всі розуміємо, що сьогодні Україна захищає не тільки своє майбутнє, але й майбутнє демократії на Європейському континенті, майбутнє Республіки Молдови, майбутнє свободи і гідності. Тому я, як колишній інженер і не дипломат, Хочу сказати, що сподіваюся, що вистачить бавовни на тимчасово окупованих територіях для того, щоб загарбники з соромом втекли, які не здадуться у полон, які не будуть вбиті. І після цього ми зможемо щиро будувати спільні плани щодо нашого європейського майбутнього. Ми закриємо, перегорнемо ті сторінки з нашого радянського, як його, ту спадщину, яка має ще негативний вплив. І зможемо, як дві демократичні держави, спільно рухатися до суспільства демократичних держав Європейського Союзу. Дякую. Місіо Нантой, дякую дуже багато. Фраджіл піс є перезорт у Молдові. Thanks to the interethnic balance. On behalf of Ukrainians, today we thank Moldova for becoming a second home for Ukrainians in these trying times. I give the floor now to Vera Pituhov, Vice Director of the Agency of Interethnic Relations. Stimate Domnule Președinte 
a Congresului Ucrainenilor din Republica Moldova, Excelențe, domnule ambasador și reprezentanți al misiunilor diplomatice din Republica Moldova, stimate domnule deputat, onorată asistență. Ne aflăm în Republica Moldova. Agenția Relații Interetnice pe care eu astăzi o prezint ca structura Guvernului Republicii Moldova în domeniul ce implementează politica în domeniul relațiilor interetnice a fost și este alături de cetățenii Republicii Moldova, în cazul dat de etnia ucraineană, noi am susținut și vom susține tot pentru a construi un stat democratic. Un stat unde fiecare cetățean își iubește țara, își iubește limba, își iubește istoria și tradiția. Republica Moldova a devenit stat candidat în Uniunea Europeană. Ca și Ucraina, noi ne dorim foarte mult ca să îndeplinim acest plan de acțiuni pentru a merita să fim țară europeană. Ca și Ucraina, noi vom depune toate eforturile ca să respectăm vecinii, să fim și în clipele frumoase, și în clipele cele mai grele ale țării alături de vecinii noștri. Vreau să menționez că poporul Republicii Moldova în aceste grele zile a fost și este alături de cetățenii ucraineni. Noi am depus eforturi atât structurile statului, cât și organizațiile etnoculturale, cât și fiecare cetățean a Republicii Moldova, ca cei care au venit în Republica Moldova și au fugit de acel război sângeros, în anii aceștia care nu ne-am așteptat nimeni. Noi am depus umărul, noi am depus sufletul ca ei cel puțin să simte căldura noastră. Agenția Relații Interetnice de asemenea a fost alături de acești cetățeni. În Casa Naționalităților, care este un centru susținut de Guvernul Republicii Moldova, au fost organizate... Pentru copii un șir de evenimente au fost organizate întâlniri cu mamele acestor copii și vreau să menționez încă un lucru, că de la 1 septembrie vom organiza grupe pentru studierea limbii române pentru refugiații din Ucraina, pentru ca ei să se simte cel puțin comod atât timp cât ei sunt în Ucraina. Eu vă doresc și îmi doresc ca acest forum acest eveniment să ajungă în sufletul fiecăruia. Acest eveniment să-și aducă contribuția ca Republica Moldova să meargă într-adevăr pe o undă frumoasă. Ca acest eveniment să, de să devină o platformă de dialog între structurile statului, organizațiile etnoculturale și ONG-urile din Republica Moldova, cât și organizațiile internaționale. Și la final, permiteți-mi să înmân această diplomă de grațiune președintelui Congresului Ucrainean din Republica Moldova, Dmitri Lecorțăv, și în numele dumneavoastră să aduc mulțumire tuturor membrilor organizației dumneavoastră, fiindcă într-adevăr aduceți cel mai mare contribuție care o merită fiecare cetățean a Republicii Moldova. Felicitări, Dmitri! Vă mulțumesc! We thank the agency for their interethnic relations in Moldova, as well as, as we thank the co-organizers and partners of UDM for their high contribution to the development of intercultural dialogue and sustainable partnership. And we are moving on to the next part of UDM, the discussion panels. The theme of our first panel will be crisis response strategies in Moldova. We invite the speakers of the first panel to take their places.
So the topic of our first panel discussion is crisis response strategies in Moldova. And the speakers of the panel will be Bertrand Blan, Senior Emergency Coordinator, UNHCR. Adrian Yefros, Head of the United Center for Crisis Response. Kirill Prihodko, Program Coordinator of the Congress of Ukrainians in Moldova. Tomas Harbovsky, uh, Head of Solidarity Fund Poland in Moldova. Alexander Makuhin, Administrator of the Topomogog of MD. Uh, he will join us by, the, by uh, online connection. Natasa Amirovich, uh, CCCM Program Officer, IOM. And uh, Olena Prisiznyuk, Administrator in Is uh, PA Israel Aid Moldova. So some speakers have prepared presentations and our colleagues will gladly play the presentations on your requests. As co-organizers, as well as the agency uniting under its provision the coordination of the anti-crisis response system, I invite Mr. Bertrand Blank, uh, Senior Emergency Coordinator of the UNHCR, to start. Thank you. All right, so my name is Bertrand Blanc. I'm the uh, Senior Emergency Coordinator of UNHCR and Deputy Representative of UNHCR Moldova. I've been in the country since uh, the 22nd of February, today before the, the start of the hostility and wars, and then uh, since there, six months uh, on the front line with the partner and colleagues. So I'd like to give you a very short overview of where, what's been done in six months and where we are in the next step. So can you please? Or if you want, you can give it to me and I can do it. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, regionally speaking, on, on the rural region, you know that we have 3.8 million refugees in Europe uh, from Ukraine. Looking to the Moldova number, which are just here, this is the last number, um, the figure is the 19th of August. We have more than half a million refugees who enter into Moldova. You, you are informed that the vast majority went to uh, Moldova and toward the European Union, but we still have 90,000 refugees in Moldova by today. Um, on the 90,000 refugees, we give you a bit of disaggregate data. Uh, half of them have refugee children, 22,000 uh, boys, 22,000 almost uh, uh, girls. So it's, a, it's an important question for, for, the, for the next steps. And you have also this number that I think is important and relevant for all of us, is a 12,000 elderly refugee, which means refugee over 65 years old, which is also a trend that needs to be taken into consideration when we, we're planning and we think about the response. What has been the, the, the main pillar of the emergency response for the uh, international humanitarian community since the beginning of the crisis has been on three silos. The first one is a protection on the move, what we call the protection on the move, which has been receiving the refugee at the border, so working with the border control, reception facilities, make sure that you have protection services in Palanca, Otachi, and Colonel Efros, and, 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 and UNHCR being uh, strong support with Colonel Efros' uh, effort to strengthen the borders and the Ministry of Interior. So ensure that you have child protection mechanism, GBV, access to health at the border when you first enter in the country. Then, as we mentioned, you know that many refugees went through Moldova and traveled to Romania. So we put in place some corridor, directly from Palanca or Otachi in the north, to Romania with IOM and UNHCR on the partnership, which has been a great achievement also to ensure that you have a safe travel to the European Union, you know. No, free of charge, of course, but with protection of guard and some uh, mechanism to ensure that you're safe. Another way to uh, ensure the protection and move, and this is a very uh, solid program with the European Union, launched by the European Commission, is the EU transfer. Start also a few months ago with a, a pledge and a quote of more than almost 20,000 refugees to be accepted by the main European country from Chisinau directly to, uh, to the European country, Germany, uh, Italy, Belgium, France, Austria, not to mention all of the countries, Sweden also, have received refugees directly from Chisinau and have them to travel and to have a safe place also outside. This is part of the mechanism that we call the, the solidarity internationality with the Moldovan uh, country. 
The next one, and it's a very important one and probably one of the more effective today in Moldova, is the cash assistance. We put in place since two weeks after the war, on the 15th of March, we start with the cash assistance for refugee and for host community. Put in place with a partner, a system with biometric data that allowed us to you know, track the, the, the money and the cash and give a credit, par, a credit card to a refugee. More than 7, 2,000 refugees received this card. And then allocation, monthly allocation of $120 uh, since the beginning of the crisis. And on the top of this, distribution has been done to almost 10,000 Moldovan families who are hosting also refugees. So then we make sure that the cash assistance, which is a very efficient tool to provide humanitarian assistance to the, during the crisis, has been operating for families and for the Ukrainian refugee. So all this program, it's, um, I'm speaking on behalf of UNHCR, but this is a program that we've been doing jointly with a partner. UNICEF has been funding part of the, the funding for refugees. IUM has been also very active. WFP also, ICRC, not to mention all my partners. There is 85 international organizations and national organizations partners on the response in Moldova. So you see this is a massive in, uh, investment for the international community. And the last pillar of the, of the emergency response has been, of course, the shelter and accommodation. And this is something that has been done uh, on very close connection with the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection, uh, today representing by the Deputy Minister, uh, Monsieur Anka um, It's very it's tragic, of course, because when you arrive, you need to have a, uh, a place to stay. We all focus on what we call the RAC, the Refugee Accommodation Center. This is all this uh, collective center that you have seen in the country. We wish, we wish almost 96 of them at one point. Now it's about 70 of these centers everywhere in the big city, in Chisinau, and Belt, in the south. Those RAC, Refugee Accommodation Center, are a very important tool for the emergency response. And I have to say, something exceptional has been done in Moldova, because when we start the crisis on 24th, you have 250 seats only in the RAC. It was in Chisinau and a bit in Palanca. Three days after, 2,500. The next Monday, 7,000. All of them done by who? By the Ministry of uh, Social and Protection, by ANAS, by local authorities, and by the, 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 the community. So that is this exceptional kind of reactiveness we have seen on the shelter will allow us to say that for the first day of the crisis, no one was sleeping outside. It's not always the case. Even on the rich country receiving refugee and flux on the first day, this is not always the case. In Moldova, we have not seen this kind of situation. And this is something that needs to be, to be acknowledged and mentioned. And kudos to the authority, local authority and community in Moldova for this. So today, the RAC are functioning. We put a lot of resources to the international community on various technology. We're not going to the detail. They are in place. We keep it. We work with uh, Colonel in France and the minister also to, to keep them in case. But the main, the main uh, impact on the commission is the host community. 95% of refugees are living with uh, host community, renting flat. So that's also something we need to, to take into consideration for the future. The RAC is an important effort of all of us, but it's not covering the majority of the needs for commission and shelter of the refugee in Moldova. Next step, and I will stop with this slide. I hope I'm not too fast. Um, so emergency six months, now we need to look a bit ahead. What is ahead after the emergency is a stabilization phase. We are already in a kind of stabilization. You saw the number of refugees remain around 90,000 for the past two months and a half. We still have some refugee entrance into the country, but the number are, are, are kind of stabilized. It's not like in March when we, we face the emergency. So we need to think about now the social inclusion of the refugee. And this is coming with the first point of use CDS we call temporary protection, which is the legal framework on which the refugee can stay in the country. For the moment a refugee arrives in Moldova, we stay for 90 days because this, this is a special situation, but that's all. You cannot, as a refugee, put your mind to integration in a country if you don't have a legal statute. So the temporary protection, which is already uh, very advanced in the discussion and the government is working on this one with our support, will allow us for refugees to stay in Moldova with a one-year residency. When you start to have a one-year residency, then you can look to job opportunity, access to education for your kids, and everything will make your life more easy. So this is very much the next step that we are starting already. We already start, and that hopefully the international community will be on, uh, on the full support for the Moldovan authority, local authority and those community to uh, support this, this effort. Why we are looking for this uh, stabilization phase and a new uh, approach on the, on the situation, we are still looking also on what's going on in Ukraine, and nobody can tell today that we will not face another emergency on an emergency. So that's why we have the contingency planning. And the contingency planning has been a massive effort, and this is, uh, again, uh, kudos to Colonel Frost for the 
coordination of 85 international partners plus the ministry, plus the donors for the contingency planning in, in Moldova, which is one of the best Moldova uh, contingency planning we have in the European Union uh, response so far. With, for the Odessa scenario, we are still prepared in case that something happens in the next month. So we do have this <coughs> dual approach of integration, inclusion, access to school, health, job opportunity, but at the same time, we still have the border, we have the rack open, and we are prepared in case there is another emergency. And this is why deepening the collabor collaboration and coordination with the authority is key for us. We have been very much supporting of the government at the ministerial level. A lot of agency, and maybe my colleague from here also we mentioned it. We are working now with the city mayor in Kishno, Comrat, Belt, Otachi. We try to engage much more with the local authority. This is the next step of your support, and this is where we we aim to be. So, I've been fast. I always speak fast. So I hope I was uh, quite clear. I will stop here, and uh, thanks again for the invitation and thanks for the attendance. Mr. Blanc, thank you very much. And we hand over the floor to Adrian Yifros, head of the United Center for Crisis Response. Good morning. Thank you, first of all, for the Congress of Ukrainians in Moldova for inviting me. Um, thank you for all of you being here and supporting the refugee from Ukraine in such a difficult situation. Uh, I will be short because Mr. Blanc uh, already briefed on a lot of issue which we done together and knowing the second part of this event I don't want to bother you with presentation but to to, to proceed on the, the real cultural part of the event so I will have a short presentation of who we are and what we are doing the joint uh, crisis management center it is a special tool uh, created ad hoc by the Prime Minister in order to facilitate the coordination between the national actors and international actors in order to have a better understanding on what and who and where have to, to do in support of, of the refugees. Uh, on the chart you can see that we have uh, Operational Coordination Council which consists from the state secretary of almost all the ministers where we take decision and proposal to the, the higher echelon in order to be approved and facilitate the support to the Ukrainian refugees here in the country. And uh, we have UNHCR as a main uh, partner and thank you for all uh, UN uh, agencies and all the partners countries, embassies for the great effort and great uh, support to the Moldavian government in order to support the, the refugees coming from, from Ukraine. And um, the ma main task of the center is... Hmm? Click, please. Cyber attack. Okay. So you can see on the slide the, the main tasks of the center, but the the, the truly or the main task is uh, coordination of activity and to unify all the efforts in order to achieve the the common goal to support the Ukrainian refugees fleeing from the war here in in Moldova. So. Day by day, we face uh, from the, the strategic level decision, as uh, Mr. Bertrand said, about we developed the contingency plan uh, from strategic level to operational level. We prepare decisions or, or um, uh, we proposal for the, the commission for uh, exceptional situation to be approved in order to facilitate our support. and till the tactical level, um, reacting on the needs on the, the ground for particular or special cases which uh, happens uh, day by day. Uh, some facts I want to, to emphasize on this uh, slide that more than 507 uh, 
almost 600,000 of refugee um, enter in the Republic of Moldova and almost 80,000 they are here in Moldova. And when I'm speaking about 80,000 are the refugees who are coming through the uh, Ukraine and Moldavian border. But we have almost 8,000 coming back from uh, European Union or around the world here in Moldova in order to stay or to transit the Republic of Moldova going back in, in Ukraine. So uh, almost 65% of the, the refugees are women, children and uh, old people. So with special needs and our uh, focus is to provide uh, for those people with special needs the, the proper uh, support and uh, uh, to, to feel that they have everything what they, they need. Regarding asylum, you can see the number of uh, more than 7,000 Mm, request of asylum here in the Republic of Moldova and we are working hard and um, with, with concrete steps in order to approve and have this uh, temporary protection for all the Ukrainians who are in the Republic of Moldova and from this, uh, from this step I think all the, the plans and the strategy will, will increase and the people who are in Moldova, the refugees, will feel more comfortable, more safe, and they can do some plans for the future, uh, having this uh, protection, uh, temporary protection. Transport. Uh, it was from the beginning a very big issue for us because no one was prepared to have this big amount, 30, 40,000 people, um, waiting on the, the borders, trying to cross the border uh, to, to find a better place and safe place. Um, and it was a big mobilization from the government side, civil society partners here in order to facilitate this transportation uh, service even in Republic of Moldova to the racks or uh, to the European country. And you can see the figures on the, on the slides and at the same time you can see the countries which we uh, mm, facilitate the, the transportation of the, the refugees. At the very beginning we uh, provide the government and especially the, the social so, um, society was uh, very highly motivated and mobilized to, to provide the basic needs for the refugees, which is food, food for the kids, and to provide a shelter. So um, now with, uh, with the, the partner uh, support, we providing the, the, the food in the racks. At the same time, we provide uh, vouchers for those families who are in the uh, living on their own or in the uh, Moldavian families. We continue to do this and we will do in, in, uh, in the same manner and to, to make sure that everyone has what has at least the basic uh, needs uh, for food. Accommodation, it was very uh, big again a issue at the beginning uh, providing uh, accommodation and again the the civilian society opened their homes their hearts uh, receiving refugees from ukraine without any doubts just uh, offering the solidarity and uh, empathy for those who are uh, fleeing from from the the war uh, at the beginning the government opened 130 uh, racks in a very short notice and a very short time, providing with, again, with a basic needs. Re later on, we start to develop and improve those racks, but at the very beginning, with the basic needs, uh, everyone was uh, provided with a shelter and uh, no one was outside because it was in the winter time, everyone was in a, a safe and warm place. Right now, uh, Anas is uh, 
in leading or is taking care about 74 racks and the six racks are opened by the Ministry of Interiors. Uh, providing or we continue to provide the same support uh, for those who cannot live by their own or in some families. Education, I will not go through the, the, the numbers you can see on the slide. I just want to emphasize that we are working hard now with the Ministry of Education in order to facilitate the integration of kids in the school. Uh, again, with the partners, um, we provide uh, or we open the summer camps and totally about 1,000 uh, kids from Ukraine will uh, already 600 there in those uh, summer camps until the, the end of the summer we will have a number of 1,000 kids in the summer camps in order to again to integrate them, them in the society playing with the Moldavian kids knowing the culture Moldavian from, from Ukraine and Ukraine from Moldavian. Uh, I have been in those camps and I saw a lot of activities, common activities uh, regarding the, the cultural exchange. Uh, great activities and I think this is a good opportunity to have this integration. Uh, healthcare, you can see again the numbers uh, uh, 120 births here in in six uh, six months, which is is good. Uh, and um, a few weeks ago, the government um, took the decision by the law that the Ukrainians uh, refugee will have the same uh, health care as uh, Moldavian citizens, which is great. And uh, in 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 uh, such uh, way, we we show our. Um, willing to, to help and to, to provide the, the basic needs. Social inclusion, already 728 uh, refugees from Ukraine are employed. Uh, someone can ask why it, this number is small one, but taking in consideration who is coming from Ukraine, their kids, children, old people, uh, so this number uh, reflects the, the reality and uh, it's, it's a true number, but we still have more than 2,200 uh, free places uh, in order to, to ready to, to be fulfilled with the refugees if they, they have this uh, will. The government uh, is doing all which we can do in order to, to support or to facilitate the, uh, the employment. Um, and we have some exceptions from, from the law in, in, in this regard. So uh, we encourage that the, the Ukrainian refugee are employed in, in our uh, community and we can uh, have a better integration through, through this uh, social inclusion. Cash assistance, I will not, Mr. Bertrand already uh, briefed on, on this, and I think it's one of the best tools which can support the Ukrainians on, on their needs here, uh, because we, we could see what they had at the beginning with them. They have a kid in one hand and a small back in another head they, they had at the beginning nothing so this support goes to 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 facilitate or to you know to to ensure that their uh, needs uh, at least for 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 the the first uh, period okay on on this slide you can see the amount of uh, financial donation which comes from the international community, state partners, organization, uh, Moldavian contributors, and all this amount is uh, clearly defined only to be spent on the refugee needs. Uh, at the same time, we 
are not indifferent of what is going on in, in Ukraine and you know very well that Moldova is one of the, the poorest country in Europe but at the same time we are solidar with, with the, the uh, people in Ukraine and uh, we delivered two humanitarian uh, mm, echelons of, of uh, aid to, to Ukrainian consists from uh, food, uh, uh, medical uh, equipment and so on in order to not to facilitate or to support the people who are in Moldova but also who are in, staying in, uh, in Ukraine. So plans for the future, humanitarian protection will be the, the cornerstone in order to develop more programs to, to support the Ukrainian people here in Moldova uh, and will facilitate for sure the, the social inclusion. We will have more people uh, employed, more uh, kids in a school, more uh, people involved in our cultural, economical and uh, activities. And uh, at the same time, we are working on the relocation. We have ensured some uh, free slots in the European Union and we will continue to facilitate the transportation and uh, to facilitate the relocation uh, program. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And we give the floor to Kirill Prichotko, uh, Program Coordinator of National Congress of Ukrainians in Moldova. Hello, everyone, and we are welcoming you at the Ukrainian Day in Moldova. Uh, we are the National Congress of Ukrainians of Moldova, and we are really honored by your presence today, and especially by the presence of our partners, of the uh, governmental representatives, of the NGOs, and all the actors of the Ukrainian, Moldavian, and international community who are participating today in the crisis response during this whole six months. We did, together with all of the actors who are represented here today, lots of job in terms of helping Ukrainian people. And I don't want to be giving today the long presentation. I would be sure because most of you approximately know what we are doing, but we really want to tell what are the future plans because uh, currently we are on a stage when we have to plan the strategic development of the programs on the refugees social inclusion. That is the help which uh, we provided to Ukrainian people and to Ukraine in this period. 26 million Ukrainian grievances were allocated by us during this period. And most of this help is done also by the cooperation with all of you. You helped us, you donated to us, you made us powerful, and we converted it to help for Ukrainian refugees every day. We continue to supply the medications, we continue to accommodate people, we continue to be implementing partners of your organization and the international community every day, and we are planning to continue supporting Ukraine and providing as much help as we could. We have certain projects in terms of uh, the emergency crisis response which are ongoing. First of all, we have the Ukrainian Refugee Center. And so far, you know, we had been facilitating the Ukrainian Refugee Center through all of the six months. It became a focal point of informing the refugees, of accommodating the refugees, of getting connected the Ukrainian refugees to the Ukrainian diaspora where we can speak the same language to people and convert all the messages which uh, um, have the international community, which has the Moldovian government, which is represented on the market 
in Ukrainian language and to Ukrainian people who are in search of that information, who are in search of help, who are in search of accommodation, who are in search of cash assistance. Therefore, we try to be an intermediary reactor which translates, which provides, which accommodates and which facilitates. Currently, we have also the evacuation program together with our dear partners from Germany and the partners from UNHCR as well and the partners from IOM. Together, we try to make the tension in Moldovan society less, to provide the people in going out of Ukraine to Moldova to receive the status of temporary protection and be transported for free to the European countries where they can get accommodation, where they can get, sorry, yep, <laughs> where they can get as well uh, the cash assistance there and the conditions of life which uh, uh, correspond to the core humanitarian standards because we know that uh, in Moldova, unfortunately, the status of temporary protection is not yet in place. That's why altogether we as Ukrainian diaspora organization um, and we are asking for that for our international uh, colleagues and partners and also to Moldovan government to start the procedure of uh, the temporary protection status in Moldova. We as Ukrainians are of Moldova are kindly asking to take that into consideration. We know that the dialogue is in the scene. Uh, we know that uh, there's lots of uh, advocacy made for that. And um, from our side, we sincerely believe that that is what Ukrainian refugees require right now here in terms of the social inclusion and the future plans. In regard to our evacuation program, we are going to proceed it. We're still evacuating people from the um, Nikolaev, from Odessa, from the hotspots, bringing them to Moldova, accommodating them and providing the transport to European countries. We are going to continue that program. In regard to humanitarian aid, in the beginning of crisis, as far as you know, Moldova has never been a state which received the humanitarian, uh, which sent humanitarian aid. It was a state which received humanitarian aid. There was no clear mechanism existing on the market to send to Ukraine, to export to Ukraine the medical humanitarian aid, the medicines and the medical equipment together with the embassy of Ukraine, together with our partners. We have created the mechanism and how to send it. We have sent most of the 20 tons of medical humanitarian aid to Ukrainian hospitals, which uh, are working every day to serve the civilian people affected by the Russian invasion. And currently, so far, that project went quite well. We have uh, the partnership together with the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection. And together, we, as Ukrainian Congress, uh, as the National Congress of Ukrainians of Moldova have received all the medical humanitarian aid from Moldovan government, which was aided to Moldova from the international community, and we are obliged to send it to Ukraine. So there's lots of work done, and we are going to continue the program on the provision of medications to people in Ukraine and to hospitals in Ukraine and further also thankfully to our partners from Japan as well. In regard to the children camp, we have started thinking about the social inclusion programs in terms of the refugees in the early beginning of the crisis. And currently, together with our partners from Poland, we started the uh, refugee children camp as a small project, as a pilot one. But we understand that the challenges which we have in terms of the social inclusion for refugees are going far beyond of such initiatives. That is why we're introducing today two projects which we are going to provide. Firstly, in the strategic perspective, we want to show the reality, we want to show the challenges which refugees are facing here. That is why we have started the first Ukrainian language program, the news on the national television in Ukrainian language in Moldova One. That's our first media project for Ukrainian diaspora. And we today very proud because Daria has become the host of the Ukrainian news in Moldova. Ukrainian diaspora in Moldova is a second ethnicity as to the local population. And we believe we have to have the media representation here. That is why, thankfully, also to our international partners, we're able to launch the project. Such project as the ones who stays, for instance, 
and talk about the social inclusion for refugees to mitigate the social tension between Moldovan society and the Ukrainian group of the refugees. In terms of the most hard and strategic project which we have here and about which we're talking now together also with the partners from UNHCR, with the partners from the government, with the partners from international organizations is the topic of the labor inclusion. We understand that, um, yes, that is true. Most Ukrainian refugees who are coming to Moldova are rather children, 40%. There are lots of people of elderly age, but also there are a group of 20,000 people who are women and men that are in search of getting socially included in Moldova. And the best way to do it, we believe, from our side and the requests which we receive is to get employed. On our behalf, on behalf of the National Congress of Ukrainians of Moldova, we are going to provide a project which facilitates an opportunity for every Ukrainian refugee who is coming to Moldova, not only to receive the humanitarian aid, not only to receive the non-food items or cash assistance, the free accommodations, but also to find the way and an opportunity to get employed in Moldova, to be able to cover their living costs, to be socially included, and to support their families by themselves. That is how our refugee center house looks like. In regard to the international partners, in regard to the local partners, and also in regard to uh, the Moldovan government agencies, all what we are doing here in terms of the refugee crisis response is impossible without your support. So today we're expressing our gratitude for you as well for helping us through that way and hard times for Ukraine. Only united we are able to support the democracy to develop the livelihood of Ukrainians who are affected by the Russian invasion and to stand hand by hand and shoulder by shoulder to be able to defend ourselves. We also are partnering the Ukrainian organizations, the Ukrainian government. And as far as you know, we are an umbrella brand which is included in the overall stakeholder of Ukrainian World Congress of Diaspora. And a little surprise at the end. Lots of communities here in Moldova are pleased by having their community center. We're very inspired by the um, example of the Jewish community and the example of the other communities represented here. And so far, the Ukrainians are the second diaspora and the second ethnicity in Moldova as to the local population. We sincerely announce today that we are starting the creation of the project of the Ukrainian community house in Moldova. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. And we are giving the floor to Tomasz Herbowski, Head of Solidarity Fund in Moldova, Poland. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm really honored that, uh, that, that I'm present here. And uh, uh, to be honest, I had some, let's say, some doubts I discussed with Kirill before because I don't feel that we uh, do have something to present uh, because uh, uh, the, all the, the all work that was done uh, was done by our partners, our colleagues from the Ukrainian Center, but then uh, Ukrainian Congress. But then I realized that I'm wrong. <laughs> And Kirill helped me to understand that because, uh, yes, we provided uh, some funds, some resources at the very beginning. I believe that uh, this is also an important lesson that we learned, that we could, could be able to provide some funds at the very beginning, but not only funds, but also different kind of resources that we have and we are not aware that we do have. First of all, people uh, and, uh, and dedicated team. And that's why I believe that 
uh, that it is good that I'm here because I can also uh, be here on behalf of the team the, of, of the organization of Solidarity Fund Pierre in Moldova, uh, who, yes, who was involved and is involved in support and cooperation with, with the Congress. Uh, so please take my presentation as a case study. Yes, uh, as, a case, uh, as a case study of collaboration between implementing partner, we are State Treasury Foundation of uh, Polish Ministry of Foreign Affairs, so we are dealing with development, cooperation for development, which is absolutely something different than emergency response. Usually we are working and trying to work on the long, uh, long distance uh, processes. We believe that development is a process and it is really, really uh, challenging to change, uh, to, change, uh, to change the approach. We are working with local development here in Moldova since 2012. Uh, Oh, and I can see that. Uh, uh, so this experience of collaboration with uh, with the national congress is also lesson lesson learned uh, for us how to deal with uh, with immediate uh, immediate response, and uh, yeah. Uh, what I believe was crucial for us is that we could meet on 25th of uh, February. Yes, so uh, with, uh, with Dima and with colleagues from the National Congress because uh, we had, let's say, this uh, two motivations, right? To react uh, as soon as possible. Uh, but also there was also an intuition to support Ukrainian diaspora uh, from Moldova to react. Uh, and I believe that this was uh, really important uh, and uh, important that uh, we realized that our role is to create an environment for, do for those who should do this work first. Uh, and I really, uh, I'm glad and thankful that, that we could meet and we could establish this colla collaboration on 25th of, uh, of uh, February and we could launch together uh, the Refugee Center that is managed by the National Congress. Uh, you can see that the, the, the money that we provided are not big money. Uh, but the work that was done uh, was really huge and uh, is uh, continuing. And the second initiative that was launched and it was mentioned by, uh, by Kirill was this uh, uh, Camp for Children. Also, we could uh, mobilize our partners, like the library uh, from Chisinau. They established the partnership simply because, you know, uh, the location is suitable. Uh, and you can see the pictures uh, that were uh, that were drawn by the people, uh, by the children who participated uh, and participate in this uh, in these summer camps. Uh, so, yeah. The perspective of uh, uh, this, let's say, these are uh, those initiatives that uh, that were supported and are still supported by as us as uh, Solidarity Fund. We have some lessons learned. Here are just you know the slogans, but uh, internally we are doing a huge reflection. Yes, how to deal with uh, such crises? How to how to provide uh, immediate response for the. Uh, for the uh, for the emergency situation, we believe that yeah, the key issues are to create strong partnership, and we are really thankful that we have uh, this partnership with uh, with the national co uh, congress to build up the team, not only the team within the organization, but uh, uh, but to create and to ensure creation of the team of different stakeholders, um, uh, uh, to be aware that. We need to uh, we need to work on different uh, different areas, and if we are speaking about uh, long distance, long distance approach, we need to remember about uh, organizing and structuring things, which is really difficult once we are speaking about emergency response. Um, we are trying to mobilize funds and mobilize our resources to, to continue with the support for the refugee center or, um, uh, or the shelter. We are going to continue uh, uh, to learn some lessons from this testing projects, as Kirill said, related to children and ensure, uh, and ensure some 
continuation for these uh, activities. We'll be really happy to, to meet with other uh, uh, partners of Ukrainian Congress to discuss, to, uh, to ensure synergies between ourselves. Uh, and I would like to mention that uh, I hope that Mr. Ambassador said that Ukrainian tradition is to work in hard times, but I really hope that uh, this challenging uh, time uh, is also um, change-making. And uh, the new Ukrainian tradition would be to work in good times. And, uh, and I believe that Ukrainian people and Ukrainian uh, society is starting that. So I hope that even if today we believe that these times are, are uh, really hard, and indeed this is like that, but on the other hand, I believe that this is also start starting point of something new. And I really wish that uh, you as Ukrainian people are starting new tradition uh, in your history, and, uh, and, and we are happy that we are uh, not happy. <laughs> We are honored uh, that we uh, we are standing uh, to the, together with you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Information is the key resource for managing a crisis like the one we are facing, and also to helping refugees to regain the control over their lives again. Uh, I'm passing the floor to administrator of the key information resource for Ukrainian refugees in Moldova, Dopomoga GovMD. Uh, he will connect to us online. Alexander Makuhin. Good morning. Yeah. So can I start? Uh, okay. We will speak uh, what language? Ukraine, uh, English? Uh, English. English. English? No. Okay. <laughs> so, good morning to everyone. Good morning to your colleagues. Uh, first of all, I uh, what what to say a great big thanks for the organizers, especially Ukrainian Congress, to give me my, this opportunity to talk with you online, because fortunately my plane has uh, delayed and now I'm just not landing in Tishino, but we'll see it as a second time, like, personal. So, first of all, about the situation uh, which connecting with um, informational uh, distribution, which we're talking about. So, um, uh, firstly, what about uh, how it's working, the Pomoga platform? So it was uh, very easy to start with it because, first of all, uh, we launched our platform at February 26. It is the second day of the war. It was uh, not an order or something like request, uh, but as a part of uh, very well uh, understandable what's happened situations and how it's working as people like IT specialists and migrational and informational distributions specialists create, create a platform. Uh, first, uh, first time it was called uh, Depomoga Live. Uh, our main goal it was uh, collecting to all necessary information which uh, have launched it uh, up to this in this first day of the war. Um, because we also know that it is very tricky question. What about what about we talk um, of information distribution? So uh, technically, you can find some information on the social media, but 
it can be wrong or can be manipulating or can be propagandistic. Uh, you can find some information with uh, very, uh, very well development now, uh, Viber chats, Telegram chat, and so on. But it is another question about the securing uh, and um, proofing this information. So uh, our concept is uh, very easy. So what is the point? Uh, our we working with information, all connecting with uh, any aspects of uh, everyday, let's say, everyday life of uh, Ukrainian refugees in the Republic of Moldova. So um, our main point is information uh, and some related things that this information needs to be simply understandable, clear, faster, proofed, and uh, it is uh, one of the key points which we are working to. Uh, for example, there is uh, so many questions about, for example, the government institutions and so on, uh, about how we can approach the Ukrainian refugees, because uh, it is not so easy, uh, because there is a lot of people who are frustrated. Uh, there is a lot of people who are just afraid or in panic, especially when uh, we started our uh, our work at everyday mood. Uh, there was a lot of people who I was simply shocked. She, and all these people, they didn't understand this uh, huge uh, amount of uh, big text, especially with this text can be written in very, uh, let's say, complicated or bureaucratic language. And our main goal was, uh, let's say, not um, reduct um, but simplifies it, uh, the main points, the main bullet point of this text, of this information, and uh, return it uh, to the refugee community as soon uh, as possible, as fast as possible, and as clear as possible. We also have um, many, uh, many requests about the information, so we try to uh, communicate with the refugee community to understand uh, which way is working, which way is not so working, and so on. So after, let's say, half a year of our activation, so after one week we have, let's say, a uh, very important date, at 26 August we have a half year of our activation, uh, we find some very uh, important things which needs to uh, know for, I think it needs to know for everyone who want to be involved on the collaboration and for the and for the for the refugee community and for the um, helping community at all. So uh, what about now, what about the out platform? So um, uh, now we have more than 3,000 uh, of uh, Unity users and uh, most critical things is average engagement time. You know, is it is um, things who um, which we connecting uh, how people uh, approach to our site and uh, how many times they spend on the site, how many times they, they read something, they find something, or just try to find something because we are also analyze uh, this uh, request. So uh, our average engagement time it's uh, two minutes now. It's uh, more or less stable, and it is uh, very huge, important things because there is a lot of things that uh, can be read it at 15, 12 seconds. And in many times, this 12 seconds of readings can be uh, as important for a particular person to understand what, what he person or she needs to do in this situation. And it is critical important and uh, Another thing that uh, about the main points in practice, because it is part of our analytics. Uh, so I just came um, to, uh, let's say, sublime some things. Especially one of the important points is our collaboration with UNCFR about the financial cash, um, cash program. We also help UN to approach to the citizen, approach to the Ukrainian refugees, approach uh, to the uh, local communities uh, and um, dealing with it. Uh, another another very important service is about the um, IDNP. It is uh, states uh, texting uh, texting indicator, which uh, now everyone can just uh, 
progress to our side and it is just very short process something like two minutes and you have all these uh, documents without any proofing or any another stories uh, and the, one of the most important things which we are also uh, dealing with and we also see that now uh, we have uh, three main points about the and three main, let's say, general requests of the refugee community. Of course, it is about the uh, food supplies, in general, food supplies also, but uh, hygienic project and so on is also. Uh, another story, it is uh, low status, especially how it's working with uh, um, uh, our the refugee, refugee status in Moldova, the deals, how they can uh, connect with uh, some government institution like border police, like migration police and so on. And the third main thing is, of course, the accommodation. Um, because now it's very important, especially in Tishino. But uh, during these uh, numbers, uh, you can see how it's working in reality. You can see this uh, many uh, informational and questionable requests to this. For example, we have now uh, just something like one of million and half of the visualization of these pages who are connecting with so uh, with these information points. So we are uh, can be proved for everyone who needs to know what's happened with the refugees, what they need now. We are also have this a long and long and short version of our um, answers. So if you want to go to the, some deep uh, information or deep insight you can contact with us, it's not a problem, we can uh, consult you in any case or just prove our information for any things. And what's one of the fin of final points which I also mentioned. Uh, you need to know that smart road win. I mean, uh, when you now collaborating with the refugee community, you need to know that mobile version is absolutely a critical point of any informational uh, any informational distribution if we are uh, talking about internet online because uh, all this our statistics is absolutely stable more than 80 percent is stable using only mobile phone and uh, just only 15 connecting with desktop especially if some part of the Moldavian um, helping community so uh, if you want to be in touch with the refugees let's say you need as I mentioned, uh, very mobile uh, oriented, faster, clear bullet points and understandable. And now we are just one thing that uh, I need to mention. Uh, when our project was started, we never know what we're going to the end, especially there's a lot of things we uh, need to uh, deal with. But now we are also uh, we also stabilize with our decision that we are working, we are still working uh, till this uh, war uh, was stopped and stopped after that, because we have all of us, all of uh, people who are presenting in this conference, we have uh, so many works uh, to uh, fix the situation and reliable with it. Thank you for your attention. And finally, what I uh, also mentioned in uh, my press release is peace for today. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Alexander. And uh, dear speakers, uh, I'm sorry to point out that our time today is limited. So if possible, please uh, limit your presentations to not more than five minutes. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm passing the floor to uh, Natasa Amirovich. Uh, the administrator in PA Israel Aid Moldova. Good morning, everyone. I am Natasha from IOM Moldova from Kisinau. And I would like to greet you, everyone, and my special gratitude and appreciation to National Congress of Ukrainians, whom IOM engages not on partnership basis. We do not have any joint activity altogether, but we partner as human beings and we partner 
partner. We partner as professionals who are focused on support to Ukrainians in Moldova. So I will shorten up my speech to two minutes, six minutes, it's too much, because uh, my colleagues from UNHCR and from uh, Ministry said, well, we work together, we partner together on national, on regional, and on the local level, and we coordinate through regional response uh, forum that is led by UNHCR and by the state. So speaking of IOM, we are in here from the year 2001, but we were working on migratory issues. Our mandate is to make sure that migrations are orderly and humane. Since the very start of the onset of the war in Ukraine, we were on the ground and we scaled up, first of all, in safe transportation and safe flows, trying to decongest the, the high numbers that we are coming on daily basis. So the, here behind me is the 9th of March, and the, the, maybe the most difficult moment in this, my, uh, in this crisis was actually the silence of the flows. So we were seeing 30,000, 40,000, and 50,000 people per day trying to flee and trying to move further to the EU. Today we have 15% in the country, and still country try, is trying to respond to those in need, to provide protection-sensitive approach, but also work on the stabilization of the country issues. Can we go to... So this is our geographical coverage, and these are activities that we provide within the emergency response. These are thematic areas and sectors that we take part in, of course, coordinated on the national level. So we do provide support on the Green Corridor together with UNHCR, uh, Republic of Moldova and Romania. So, so far we transported, we made sure that 12,000 people were uh, provided the safe and dignified transport further from Moldova. We also provide air transfers to EU member states and 1,800 people benefited from this. On humanitarian border management issue, we work with the border police, customs, bureau of migration and asylum on, in several modalities. We do provide technical equipment, we do provide secondments, and we do provide various trainings to sensitize and to provide more protection sensitive, sensitive uh, access to Moldova, entry to Moldova. Um, in protection, we provide, uh, I would like to highlight the AVRR, Assisted Voluntary Return, which is IOM almost branded for it. But before the war in Ukraine, we were providing mostly uh, entry to Moldova and return of Moldovans for other, from other EU countries. Starting from 24 February, we are also providing the assistance to third country nationals and so far 550 people benefited from this. As well, we also provide protection assistance to both refugees, third country nationals, but let's not forget host communities as well. So we are providing the trainings and we raise awareness and we provide the capacities to trafficking in persons issue. And so far, 2,219 persons attended those trainings or benefited from the assistance. Uh, Cash-based interventions as well. We partner with UNHCR, WFP, ICRC, other partners. We also are providing the health and MHPSS assistance, which is needed on all the levels and to all the population that is affected by this situation. So, as well, 7,245 health checkups were provided to people who are benefiting from the Green Corridor. We also do provide the trainings on PFA, which is first psychological aid to those who are in need. And we provide MHPSS, we provide the specialized trainings. Uh, so far, we also are working on rehabilitation of contingency reception accommodation facilities, 
because we are currently with provision of emergency response, we are also working on contingency planning in case of some other worsened scenarios, along with winter planning for the winter to come. Meanwhile, the mission prepared the long-term strategy, which is um, focused on three pillars. One is preparedness, another one is resilience, and the last one should be stability and development. This, this will be ideal long-term scenario to lead Moldova through emergency response, recovery, and seeing her on the top of development of the scale. So the strategy is in, in compliance with the regional strategy for uh, response to Ukraine and neighborhood countries, and it's also in compliance with our internal re regional strategies. So I will not be taking any more of your time. Thank you. I'm dehydrated. Uh, thank you very much to uh, Natasa Amirovich, the program officer of the IIM. I'm so sorry for my mistake earlier. And now I'm passing this, uh, the floor to Elena Prisizhnyuk, administrator in PI Israel Moldova. Uh, hello, dear ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm glad to welcome everyone in Ukraine and then in Moldova. My name is Olena Prisizhnyuk and I'm Ukrainian. The first, in the first day when the war started, we came to Moldova with my two small daughters. And um, now we decided to stay here on always. Why? I will, I will explain you later. Uh, so we became a ref a refugees like everyone who came to Moldova. And uh, for now, I would like to share my experience, not for advertising, not for promotion, but for believing in yourself. And uh, you be sure you can do everything what you want if you believe, and if you have power in your heart. So today I'm proud to represent not only Ukraine and Moldova also, because I love these two countries, and um, I'm grateful to God the opportunity to live in the so rich country. Why? Because the biggest riches in Moldova is our people. Because of kindness, because of support, because of tolerance. You know, it is not so important in which country Ukrainian lives. The most important is what Ukrainians do, especially for Ukraine. And now I would like to show you one example how it's working, especially in my case. I have the honor to represent the International Humanitarian Mission of Israel. I joined Israel in the beginning of March, and during these five difficult months, we opened already four offices in Moldova, Romania, and Ukraine. Now I am finance HR operation officer and administrator who represents Israel in Moldova in my country, in Moldova, and in another country also. And also I invited a lot of Ukrainians to our teams and together we created a new future for another Ukrainians. So what we are doing and how we support refugees and local organization. It can be different activities and different programs and different projects, but the most important is food distribution, humanitarian and medical supplies, child-friendly spaces, summer schools, summer camps, and a lot, a lot of different activities. What we are doing in Romania? In Romania, we have logistic hub, and um, we employed a lot of refugees. We sent a lot of supplies to Ukraine. We create a new formats for international collaboration with different countries. As you can see, um, the most supplies were sent to Odessa, Total, it was <coughs> total. It was many, many different cities and small villages in Ukraine, and uh, it was really helpful with food, with medical supplies for hospitals for people. Also, we sent to Nikolaev for osmosis filters, filtration for water. It was very big help for city and uh, we continue to provide support, technical support for the government. Our motto is future the first. 
is Rayet Motor, I mean. So the first, our strategy is social economy, because this is a top opportunity for future, for development, and for helping for people. Of course, impact, all our projects, full of strong impact effect. Also, uh, we would like to organize in September a very big networking and leadership event, Voyedino, for Ukrainians, for a connection between Ukrainians, Ukrainian refugees, Moldovan society, government, business association, and different, different stakeholders who care about refugees. This is my favorite, maybe, slide. This is <laughs> a letter to the world about kindness. Uh, together with Ukrainian small refugees, we wrote the letter and sent to the world, and we share our experience about Moldovan people, about kindness, about um, rich souls. And um, if you want, you can join us. We will share with you this information. It's very useful art therapy for Ukrainians. Thanks for your attention. I tried to be <laughs> short. And we believe that everything will be Ukraine. Thanks. Thank you so much. And thank you so much. And this concludes our first panel. I uh, thank the participants and I uh, thank the listeners for it. The Q&A session will be held in the format of a 15-minute coffee break. Thank you for your attention. Hello, everyone. I would like to invite speakers to take their seats in the front. Ambassador, Your Excellency. Okay. okay, so let's start the second panel. My name is Veronika Arpintin, I'm the manager of the Alla Equipe de Sostenere Miklo e Business Aibert, and we are the partner of this event today. I'm very happy to see you. I have a lot of emotions, and I hope that you don't want to change a lot. I salute you to this event, which is organized by the Congress of Ukrainian in the Republic of Moldova. Your Excellency, colleagues, friends, I am glad to be here with you today. The Day of Ukraine in Moldova is in its second edition being organized in ArtCore, so we are thank very much ArtCore for the support. We also would like to thank our partner, UN Refugee Agency, Embassy of Ukraine in the Republic of Moldova, Agency of Inter for Interethnic Relations, and European Bank of Reconstruction Development. The discussion panel is aimed at sharing experiences in the social and economic aspects, as well as refugee crisis management. And we all hope that the ideas and experiences discussed today will, will help and facilitate building confidence between population here in Moldova, refugees, and will enhance economic cooperation between two countries. I am glad to present today's speakers his Excellency Marko Chenko, Ambassador of Ukraine of Moldova, and I kindly invite you to take the seat. Tudor Mankas, Deputy Minister of Labor and Social Protection. Domno Tudor, bona ziua. Sergio Mihov, Head of Bilateral Cooperation Department, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Economic and, uh, Euro, e, European Integration. Bona ziua. We also will have uh, our online guests. So, Gennady Chizhikov, Head of Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce, of, uh, from Kyiv will join us online, as well as Anna, Hanna Kristiuk, head of Women International Business Club, International Headquarters for Helping Ukraine. She also will join us online. We are happy to announce that Nova Poshta represents Evgeny Shandrovsky. Are you here? Hi, Evgeny. Nice to see you. Please take your seats. Um, will be here with us today, and also Alina Skamarokhova, managing partner of a metal processing company, she should arrive from Ukraine. Alina? And our final speaker will be Olga Kurlantseva, head of Association of Ukrainian Language Teachers, Promin. She is from Moldova. And at some point, I will switch the microphone to our Dasha, our main host today. So as um, 
Uh, I apologize, but I have to leave uh, as I have another appointment. Uh, practical aspects for today's event. Working languages are English and Ukrainian. Uh, the event is streamlined on Facebook and YouTube, and you can share the streaming or also ask questions and add comments if needed. Uh, we envisage a Q&A session, but uh, uh, let's see if uh, the session will take place because we are on a slight delay today. So uh, let's follow up the process. And prior to opening the panel, I am proud to invite for the welcome speech the Ambassador of Ukraine in Moldova, Marka Shevchenko. Excellency, the floor is yours. Good day. Bună ziua tuturor. Dobroho dnia. Um, the, most difficult, the most difficult question for me, what would be a language of communication? Because we are in Moldova, audience is uh, from Moldova. Many guests and speakers English spe uh, are English-speaking people, and uh, but Ukrainian day in Moldova and Ukrainian ambassador also. I pretend to to speak in Ukrainian. So uh, the first question: Ukrainian, Romanian. Okay, I will be very brief in Ukrainian. Um, криза завжди є початком багатьох можливостей. Uh, і криза з біженцями, війна в Україні дуже яскраво це продемонстрували і в у відносинах між Україною і Молдовою. До початку війни в Україні Молдова і Україна були важливими партнерами одна для одної, але завжди знаходилася якась країна, яка виглядала більш важливою в якийсь конкретний період часу. Відразу після того, як почалася війна в Україні, в Молдову зіткнулася з величезною кризою біженців. Вся соціальна система, інфраструктура Республіки Молдова почала працювати на повну потужність і навіть, я б сказав, більше, ніж повна потужність. І в один момент Молдова для України перетворилася на країну, яка забезпечує логістику для всього українського півдня. В один момент коли українські порти виявилися заблокованими, величезна частина життєво важливого українського експорту і імпорту були спрямовані через територію Молдови. Відверто кажучи, коли розмовляю з молдовськими колегами, багато з них говорили, що це велика проблема і великий виклик для них. Водночас це виявилося величезними можливостями для подальшого розвитку. Якщо зараз запитати, як це почуває молдовська залізниця, ті експерти, які володіють матеріалом, скажуть, що не почувається вона набагато краще, ніж раніше, тому що український експорт-імпорт іде за допомогою молдовської залізниці, пропонує бюджетні надходження, робочі місця, прибутки для багатьох суміжних бізнесів і так далі. Те ж саме для України. Україна має власний прибуток, коротке плече перевезень, Констанца, порти, альтернативний шлях експорту і життєво важливого імпорту, пальне, зерно і таке інше. Головна моя думка, яку я хотів би донести вам, полягає в тому, що війна і криза продемонструвала, наскільки Україна і Молдова – важливі одна для одної. Лише тоді, коли з'являються подібні кризи, це починаєш по-справжньому розуміти. Український бізнес, який на півдні розташований, який був конкурентом молдовського бізнесу у багатьох дуже сферах, зараз пішов з ринку, 
але молдовський бізнес замістив ці об'єми частково і постачає зараз в Україну свою продукцію. В пресі останніми днями в Молдові з'явилося багато повідомлень, чому на окремі продукти харчування в Молдові традиційні зберігається дуже висока ціна. Тому що молдовський бізнес знайшов можливість почати експортувати ті види своєї продукції в Україну, які раніше покривалися українськими виробниками. Це ще одна можливість для молдовського бізнесу розширити свої ринки. Для Молдови це можливість дуже швидко замістити необхідні об'єми харчів, яких ми так потребуємо в часи, коли ми не можемо провести нормально ні зібрати врожай, ні посіяти, наприклад, озимені культури. Це ще одна ілюстрація, чому Молдова і Україна – настільки важливі одна для одного. І я всім нам бажаю, щоб сьогоднішня наша дискусія це яскраво продемонструвала і показала, наскільки, що ми ще можемо зробити у цьому зв'язку. Забігаючи наперед, я особисто очікую, що в понеділок нас всіх чекають дуже хороші новини в цьому зв'язку, але я не буду забігати наперед, буду... Будемо чекати понеділка, коли уряд Молдови і уряд України зробить відповідні оголошення. Тримаємо інтригу. Дякую. Екселенці, дякую дуже багато. Інді, війна в Україні вирішила непрецедентну прешу на суспільство та економіку. І треба треба спотлайти вирішення. Ми всі знаємо, і я буду говорити про це також, але ми треба відповідати нові можливості. І ці можливості можуть допомогти будувати більше майбутнє для Україні us in the Republic of Moldova, for Ukraine, and for all the civilized world. The continuous invasion of Ukraine to Russia has, ri has raised the urgency of accelerating the transition to inclusive economy in condition of humanitarian crisis. From the total number of thousands of Ukrainian refugees in Moldova, the absolute majority is female population and children. And I'd like to invite Tudermankas, Deputy Minister of Labor and Social Protection, with his introduction word on this. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you and congratulations to um, Ukrainian uh, people, to, to the organization, uh, inviting us and uh, for having this event here. Excellency, colleagues, friends, um, we are all together uh, in front of a situation uh, which forces us uh, to join our efforts and to uh, do our best in solving, in transforming these challenges into opportunities, as you just mentioned. And uh, I will not uh, mention or have a presentation because my colleagues already mentioned uh, most of the aspects uh, which modestly I can comment we are uh, involved in. Uh, we are somehow called in the last period Minister of Emergency because <laughs> being involved in almost biggest part of, of the aspects uh, mentioned here. So shortly behind these numbers it, about, it is about uh, human beings, so it is about six about 6,000 or thousands of uh, those transiting our territory and almost 90,000 uh, those staying here, which is about uh, human beings with basic needs, which need or uh, have to be addressed immediately, which have to be uh, addressed according to their needs today, if not yesterday, but in the same time, it is about the challenge uh, of um, involving here uh, the local population. It's not a secret that Moldova was facing already uh, many difficulties, including from the uh, social perspective, even before uh, the war started. To be honest, uh, it was kind of uh, competition because facing many difficulties when the pandemic started and when we were about thinking that we control and go to a, to a more optimistic scenario, the war started. So uh, as my previous uh, speakers mentioned, we uh, are becoming stronger. 
we're trying to, to learn from what it happened to make it happen in, in, a, be in a better way, making best use of our uh, common resources, uh, including human resources, which are the, the most uh, appreciated and uh, needed now. The ministry is a very small team, uh, but we together with colleagues from other uh, ministries, with development partners, uh, are doing our best. Uh, so uh, the burden on the state institution institutions is very huge. And uh, here uh, additional comments will simply um, sound like uh, complaining. We are here to support, we are here to be involved and to deliver results together with the development partners. We are here at the same time to um, ensure the social cohesion uh, to deliver, to provide um, inclusive services to both uh, Moldovan and uh, uh, Ukrainian citizens, not splitting them in our and foreign citizens, but uh, providing inclusive services to the most vulnerable. It's not a secret that uh, um, one of the biggest, uh, how to say, challenge for the um, the Republic of Moldova, for instance, is the energy vulnerability aspect, which needs to be addressed. So um, if we report to the um, uh, two rounds platform of support for the Moldovan government, where Minister Spatar participated, one of the four big programs is um, uh, targeting the en energy uh, vulnerability uh, aspect. But in the same time, if we link to, to my previous guests' presentations, we are the ones, together with you, uh, to address, make best of use, and uh, act today, give answers and solutions today to each of these uh, categories. Because those coming here from, from Ukraine, they are forced to come here, and we are somehow not forced, but as good neighbors, obliged to to, to host, to support, to give them an uh, opportunity to stay here. All of them from different cat categories, uh, like children support, the, the fund we, we, we create to support children, uh, silver fund for the uh, old people, and other categories that are together with those uh, Moldovans being vulnerable to be uh, addressed through uh, uh, efficient programs for, for efficient measures and uh, all, all these aspects need re or require both uh, human, financial and, uh, and, and other resources that we can together um, uh, mobilize. So it is about, it is about uh, um, joint efforts, it is about synergy, it is about uh, lessons learned and and the best use of all these resources with with a community of uh, development partners, with um, uh, other uh, colleagues from from other institutions, and uh, uh, passing in the best way, the world would end hopefully as soon as possible. Anyway, we have to be ready. We have to address, to prevent, to mitigate where is possible all these aspects related to different uh, different categories. So um, one of the aspects uh, which is linked with the, um, how to say, sense of this discussion panel is to, to link social and economic um, opportunities. So all these uh, big prog programs with the government, with the Minister of Labor and Social Protection is working on vulnerability fund, uh, energy vulnerability, um, children uh, fund, silver fund, uh, and uh, social uh, social um, uh, support fund that the ministry is lacking uh, funds to to offer these services to vulnerable gr uh, groups are those we are concentrated on and we still uh, continue to ask development partners support in order to uh, be able and to offer in time uh, quality and uh, um, appropriated support to the vulnerable groups, including um, those from the refugee uh, um, group. Thank, Thank you. you, Minister. Thank you for, for this work. 
and indeed for a small country with a fragile economy like Moldova is the poorest country in, in, in Europe and people who come to Moldova, a number of them is overwhelming uh, figure. Yet Moldova is showing a united front in terms of crisis, doing everything it can to support those in need. And I'd like also to invite our special guest, Sergio Mikhov, head of bilateral cooperation department of Ministry of Foreign Affairs, to speak about what is done externally. Then, thank you very much. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, the Ambassador, the State Secretary, dear colleagues, uh, I'll also be very brief because after 1 p.m. I have to go to the, to the airport. Um, so, uh, uh, but let me first, uh, um, uh, on behalf of the leadership of the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the European integration, uh, in particular of the State Secretary, Mr. Ruslan Bulbachan, to uh, thank uh, the head of uh, the National Congress of Ukrainians uh, in Moldova, Mr. Dmitro Likartsov, for the invitation to, um, to, to, to make some uh, introductory uh, uh, remarks uh, at the beginning of this um, uh, session, second session discussion panel uh, on the prospects of uh, socio-economic um, partnership between uh, uh, Moldova and uh, Ukraine. Uh, events of this kind um, once again uh, remind us uh, how close um, the, the, the economic and the cultural um, uh, uh, relations, uh, ties between our two countries uh, are and um, uh, how important it is to maintain and strengthen them. Uh, I'm glad that to know that uh, the today's uh, ethnocultural um, uh, festival takes place on the eve uh, of the national holidays of our states, uh, the Independence Day of the Republic of Moldova and the, the Independence Day of, of Ukraine. Um, this year, uh, Ukraine and Moldova also celebrate the 30th uh, anniversary of the establishment uh, of uh, diplomatic relations, which is a significant uh, date uh, for the modern history uh, of our independent uh, states. Uh, during these uh, three decades, uh, we have managed to achieve uh, a very good level of uh, interaction in many areas. We have an intensive political dialogue, uh, active trade and economic cooperation, close cultural and humanitarian contacts. Uh, at the, the same time, we are confident that uh, the Moldovan-Ukrainian uh, uh, relations have the potential for further uh, development, uh, and our joint efforts uh, with Ukrainian partners uh, are aimed at uh, using these uh, opportunities. Uh, additional prospects, of course, um, uh, in this regard, are opening up for our countries since June 2022, uh, already as uh, candidate countries um, for EU membership, uh, which means a clear perspective of EU accession. Uh, unfortunately, today uh, Ukraine is going uh, through extremely, extremely uh, difficult uh, times. We have this uh, unprovoked, unjustified and brutal war in Ukraine. Uh, Large-scale military operations are being conducted on its territory. It was hard to, uh, to, to, to assume, to imagine that uh, such dramatic scenarios are possible in the, th in the 21st century on the European continent. Uh, this war has already resulted, uh, unfortunately, uh, in uh, thousands and thousands of deaths uh, and casualties among the civilian population, including children. Uh, but from the beginning, we stay in solidarity with the Ukrainian uh, people, and we would like to confirm once again uh, our readiness to provide, to continue providing Ukraine all kind of assistance, including humanitarian assistance, uh, of course. We express our hope that for peace and um, stability to come soon uh, in Ukraine and as, as well as um, for rapid uh, post-war uh, reconstruction and restoration of the Ukrainian state. Uh, let's not forget uh, we are part of Europe and uh, EU, EU's values, values are our values.
So returning to, 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 to today's festival, I'd like to wish all of you uh, fruitful discussions um, and successful cultural events planned, scheduled uh, according to the program, uh, and that strengthening uh, um, not only economic culture, but also in humanitarian people-to-people uh, -people, uh, uh, contacts uh, between the Republic of uh, Moldova and Ukraine. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, and indeed the work of your ministry is visible and is much appreciated, at least uh, from point of view of citizens of Republic of Moldova. Uh, colleagues, uh, I would like to thank organizers for giving me this opportunity to talk to you. I only would wish this would be in a different circumstances, in happier circumstances. And I'd like to start my intervention with a short video. <coughs> Supporting Ukraine is helping to maintain trade for critical goods like fuel and medical supplies, keeping the lights on in homes and electricity in production lines, helping farmers put bread on tables, providing emergency working capital to small businesses, enabling refugees to organize their lives in neighboring countries, supporting Ukraine means we need to act now. We're, We're standing, standing by, by Ukraine. Ukraine. We're, We're standing, standing by, by Ukraine. Ukraine. This is the message from my colleagues from European Bank for Reconstruction Development. And I'm here now in the, this capacity. You know, the European Bank of Reconstruction Development is an economic institution, uh, and that's why I will focus my speech on economic aspects of the crisis and consequences of the war. But I would also would like to give you some more context. We, as uh, employees of IBRD, supported Congress of Ukrainians of Moldova in helping refugees, and we are very happy to do this and to have the opportunity to work with a strong organization so as they can channel all the support from the partners to the right direction. And uh, coming back to the topic, to the main topic of our meeting, um, I prepared some, some statistical data, but I, I, I will try to, to be very brief. Uh, the war in Ukraine has resulted in enormous suffering of Ukrainian people, uh, our relatives and friends in Ukraine and now who are abroad, but the war has also has economic implication. The message which I want you to leave here is the fallout of this war has already felt globally, not only in Moldova, not only in Romania, in Poland, in neighboring countries. Dealing with a huge number of refugees in Moldova was a costly thing. Middle East and African countries facing much higher prices for grain, it's a very costly thing. U.S. farmers purchasing fertilizers at a higher price. The fallout from the war will be felt by the next generations as well. IBRD announced the resilience package of, package of 2 billion euros to support Ukraine to be implemented within upcoming years and to help citizens of Ukraine and neighboring countries. And bank has also some plans for reconstruction development after the war is finished and Ukraine wins. But till then, there is a lot to do. Today, I am not going to t talk about the economic impact on Ukraine and Moldova in particular. You all feel it and you all know it. We have here guests from Moldovan companies, from Ukrainian companies who will share their experience in this sense again. And it's difficult to measure the economic impact. I would like to briefly focus on channels and mechanisms through which the war is felt economically in Moldova and globally. And the first channel, as everybody knows, is high energy prices in an immediate consequence which has implications on the inflation, reaching 40% in Moldova and 22% in Ukraine at this stage. Price for natural gas has reached the historical hits and all countries, poor countries like Moldova, which lack the infrastructure to bring new suppliers, will suffer more. In Moldova, the volume of imports of hydrocarbons, hydrocarbons has a big share in GDP. What is true? Uh, that in general, higher prices for energy mostly affect poor, poor countries. Again, in Moldova, people spend 28% of its household income for utility bills for the last year, last heating seasons. 
which is translated to the higher inflation as well. What this is telling us, that the poverty will increase in Moldova and it's already, you know, we feel it already. Competitiveness of Moldova is negatively affected due to inflation, we know it, but destroyed infrastructure and supply chain disruption damage Ukrainian economy very much. And nobody knows at this stage how much funds and how much resources and time is needed to help Ukraine to recover. Wheat prices, at the, currently they are at the level of 2008, the period of the poorest global ever uh, food production and major crisis in this sector. What we see now, that Ukraine is not exporting its last harvest for wheat, corn, oils. Shipping via Black Sea is destroyed and is not used at its capacity. Ukrainian farmers are not planting as much as they usually do. And the global harvest definitely will be lower because Ukraine has a big share in the global production of uh, crops and uh, we, uh, different crops and wheat. Countries will restrict export of agricultural commodities most of, th th there is a big probability of this. And uh, this could lead to the political and economic instability in the poorest regions. Moldova, for example, imports almost all grain from Ukraine. We depend very much of outside production of, not only of grain, but of other raw materials as well. And they, we import inflations, we import inflation and multiply it with our internal things. Moldova depends on supply on other raw materials, which means that imports will be more and more expensive, and it's already visible. International trade declines due to supply chain interruptions, and Ukraine, indeed, is the biggest production and very big economic partner of Europe for many, many items, products, services, is not able to work in its full capacity. Within the inflow of displaced Ukrainians, there is a potential of large number of people to be integrated and included in Moldovan economy. We spoke about this today because Moldova has faced a severe deficit of human resources. But there is an opposite side of the medal. We enjoyed peace for many decades with lower spending on military and bigger fiscal room for spending on education and social issues. And this trend probably will reverse now. To close, what does it mean for us? We are going to move to a more competitive world where countries' cooperation has an important role to play when it comes to the economic development. There is a silver lining. As we know from the economic literature, the migrants create new bridges between countries so as they would be a new channels for investments and trade and human capacity uh, development. And uh, we should not ignore this opportunity. And when we speak about refugees, of course, we speak about, I'm economist, we speak about the costs for the country. But let's move our direction, our mindset, to speaking about the opportunity. Just let me, yeah. Uh, I would like to give you some examples of interventions which EBRD plans to do to help refugees and to, lo to help local economy. And one of these is, is planned to be implemented autumn with one of the legal advisors in Moldova, uh, Gladie uh, and partners. We will provide legal advice to refugees wishing to employ in uh, Moldovan companies. We'll provide legal advice to Moldovan companies wishing to employ refugees. And we will provide legal advice to Ukrainian people Ukrainian businesses willing to extend their production or facilities or services to, to Moldova. And uh, I am glad to announce that this was supported also by Sweden. Uh, another, another angle of intervention and working with refugees would be providing bread on their table. And indeed, UN Refugee Agency and other donors, they did excellent job in providing this support till now. But let's see how we can empower mostly women who are in Moldova with their children to have their piece of uh, income and to not depend from these relocations. We in the team decided to start with the IT trainings, with certification and with opportunity to find a job uh, for those who are interested to build their career or uh, develop their business ideas in startups in IT sector 
and this is one of the examples. There are more examples, so let's brainstorm all together and let's put on the table our ideas so we can implement it for, implement this for, uh, for, for brighter future of everyone. And um, I probably will stop here because we, we already delay on our agenda. But my main message is, uh, as an economist, I believe that all the roots of the problems are uh, I, uh, appear from social aspects, but could be solved with economic prosperity. So if we help economies, we, are, we live, uh, we help economy of Moldova, uh, Ukraine, to solve minor issues, this will have a very big output and impact on the long run. Of course, there are very important, a very big set of problems in social aspects, in political uh, security, cyber security, someone mentioned it today, because it's another aspect where there is a need to, to put more effort. But let's focus on what we can do to make our life better and brighter. And I like, uh, I don't know, I like, uh, do, uh, do, I forgot the name, sorry, it's American scenarist, uh, producer, and uh, he always said, the future is mine. I am interested in developing it in its good shape. So let's together, try to develop it in a better shape. And um, I would like to pass the floor to Nova Posta representative, and I will leave, unfortunately, uh, I will leave, unfortunately, our meeting. Uh, Nova Posta is a right example of a company who mobilized all the resources and helped a lot in helping refugees, helping Ukraine. Of course, they will speak about this uh, shortly. And just a point, we had planned two interventions via Zoom, Zoom from Kyiv, but uh, unfortunately, both speakers now are not able to join us due, due to air bomb alert. And this is one of the, of the consequences we, we feel and see, and we hope everything will be okay this time. So, I'm passing the floor to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, dear audience. Uh, on behalf of Nova Poshta Moldova, I'm very proud to be here today. Uh, well, my name is Evgeny Shandrovsky, and uh, I'm the sales director of Mol Nova Poshta Moldova. Uh, today, I'd like to talk about our company, services, and uh, projects we have done. Uh, so Nova Poshta Moldova was founded in 2014 by Nova Poshta Ukraine, which is now the leader of express delivery market in Ukraine. And uh, where the second expense delivery points network increases the number of services and improves the quality of postal services in Ukraine. Also offering new jobs. So for right now, Nova Poshta uh, is striving to achieve the high quality of services. Over the last two years, for example, we have focused on developing our post offices network uh, and the parcel lockers, attract new partners, and also offer new jobs. So we work to make the lives of million people better by delivering uh, joy, care, love, and dreams. A smile is a sign of our commitment to the client. Our company is both a place for um, self-realization of professionals and also a company to start a career. People in Nova Poshta are reliable, uh, professional, and forward-looking. Uh, so with support of our colleagues from Ukraine, uh, we have implemented such services as um, same-day delivery through Kishinev, uh, next-day delivery door-to-door -door all over the Moldova, delivery to post office, uh, delivery to parcel lockers, and also deliver it to address all over the Ukraine. Example of best, best practices is the uh, digitalization of our services, uh, such as business account for our customers, API service for online commercials, uh, mobile application for the users, and the newest delivery option, the delivery in parcel lockers. Uh, all this became possible thanks to the experience and knowledge of our colleagues from Nova Poshta, Ukraine. Uh, well, our service provides the opportunity to import or export merchandise and documents to local and foreign companies, thereby supporting increasing the economy and developing market 
of both countries. Over a thousand of companies exports and export imports documents, shipments and merchandise using our services. And for the last three months, we observe a slight increase of the outbound and inbound flow. Uh, the most important thing that we made and that we've done this year, uh, in my opinion, it's uh, of course the uh, humanitarian help for Ukrainian people. So from March 2022, Nova Poshta, in partnership with National Congress of Ukrainians in Moldova, started to send and deliver humanitarian aid to different organizations and hospitals all over the Ukraine. Well, medicines and essential products have been received by such an organization like Public Organization Institute of Democratization and Development, Charity Foundation Elisaveta Maria, Municipal Nonprofit Enterprise Children's City Polyclinic No. 6, Charity Organization Collective Help and Logistic, International Union of Ukraine Women, and Mikolaev Regional Clinic Hospital. Uh, we are always open for those who need us. Well, uh, I think I was uh, short. Thank you for your attention um, and hope you'll enjoy this conference. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, as my colleague Veronika said earlier, we could not connect with two of our speakers due to an airborne attack uh, alert in Kyiv, but we could connect to uh, another very interesting person, Anna Lubima. Uh, she is the head of the International Cooperation Department of Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce. She will join us online. While we are connecting to Anna, I would like to thank our speakers for being this brief. This is wonderful. We are uh, on, um, almost on time now. So thank you very much. And uh, I hope we continue this way. This is wonderful. And do we have Anna yet? Recording in progress. Uh, there is a connection issue currently, so I will give the floor to the next speaker. Uh, just a second. I'm giving the floor now to Alina Skoromohova, uh, Director General and Co-Founder of the Specialized uh, Metallurgical Processing uh, Enterprise, Tin Impex. Slava Ukraini. Я все ж таки хочу, щоб сьогодні на такому чудовому заході звучала українська мова, якщо ви не заперечуєте. Я Аліна Скомарохова, маю багато титулів. Сьогодні я приїхала сюди, перш за все, щоб висловити свою щиру подяку Молдові за те, що з 24 лютого, коли війна внесла цинічні корективи в життя всіх українців, Молдова просто, знаєте, так як в родині відкрила свої двері, двері будинків і приймала наших біженців, допомагала нашим жінкам і дітям. Я народилася в невеличкому містечку за 70 км від кордону з Молдовою, тому той потік жахливий, потік автомобілів, який був нескінченний, Перший тиждень ми бачили на власні очі і багато з цих людей, які їхали, декілька діб з Харкова, з Херсону, з Києва, вони зупинялися у нас на ночівлю і бо вже не було просто комендантська година, не було можливості доїхати. Що я хочу сказати? Як керівник і власник вже 25 років спеціалізованого металургійного підприємства в Україні, не на словах знаю, з чим стикається бізнес на сьогодні. І я дуже хочу, щоб мене почули люди різних країн і, звичайно, наші добрі сусіди в Молдові. Дбайте про свою економічну безпеку. Це не менш важливо, ніж політична безпека, соціальна безпека і взагалі безпека в цілому країні. 
тому що на сьогоднішній момент ті підприємства, ті бізнесмени, які залишилися як справжні патріоти і роблять це для того, щоб виробництва працювали, вони забезпечують той самий економічний фронт. Я знаю, що в Молдову релокували не одне підприємство, і ті компанії, приватні підприємства, які приїхали сюди і тут зараз спробують е, починати заново вести свої справи. Звичайно, сьогодні пан посол говорив про те, що це надважливо, тому що е, це нові можливості, це нові горизонти. І не забуваємо про те, що е, ворог, він надто підступний. І я не вірю в те, що війна закінчиться завтра. І я дуже хочу, щоб ви також почули цей меседж, щоб ви повинні бути готові. Ви не можете втомлюватися, тому що ми поруч. Ця війна показала, що сусіди – це Молдова, що сусіди – це Польща, що сусіди – це Словаччина. І не завжди там, де є спільний кордон, це сусіди. Тому надважливо підтримувати один одного. Дуже. Е, хочу сказати про своє виробництво. Можливо, когось це зацікавить. Тому що на сьогоднішній момент ми частину свого підприємства, а ми працюємо вже 25 років на ринок Німеччини, завод Volkswagen, завод Mercedes, нашу продукцію знають у 15 країнах світу. На сьогоднішній момент, коли 22% працюючих служать в Збройних силах України, ми також змінили деякі лінійки своєї продукції і ми випускаємо плити до бронежилетів до плитоносок. Тому, якщо це взагалі цікава комусь тема, а я думаю, що всі ми повинні бути готові до таких надзвичайних ситуацій. Краще бути готовими, скажу так. І буквально з першого дня я як громадський діяч, як співзасновниця Міжнародного об'єднання жінок українок, а це е, організація, яка дійсно об'єднала 5 років тому жінок, з різних країн світу, разом зі своєю колегою, співзасновницею Ганною Крисюк, до речі, вона не могла до нас підключитися також, тому що практично вся перша панель дискусійна пройшла під сиренами в Україні, І, а з бомбоукриття зв'язок поганий, тому я хочу ще Дмитро передати вам від неї вітання щирі. Ми створили практично на першому тижні міжнародний штаб допомоги українцям. І жінки 74 країн світу об'єдналися у цьому штабі. Була проведена колосальна робота, вона і зараз проводиться. Тільки за перших три тижні ми допомогли перейти кордон жінкам, дітям, працевлаштувати, знайти житло, садочки, школи. Це надзвичайно потужна робота і більше двох тисяч жінок – тільки дякуючи нашому штабу отримали цю допомогу. Взагалі, хочу сказати ще одну цифру, тому що для мене бізнес, соціальне життя – це одне ціле, воно невід'ємне. І за цей час війни тільки гуманітарної допомоги наше виробництво, наша організація надала вже більше, ніж на 10 мільйонів. Тому цифри такі значні, і я кожен ранок прокидаюся, Отак, як сьогодні, в другій годині ночі були сирени. В півп'ятого я встала, сіла в машину, поїхала до вас, тому що я розумію, що напередодні такого для мене особливого свята, і День прапора, і День е, нашої незалежності, ми маємо бути, ми маємо презентувати Україну у всіх куточках світу, для того, щоб люди знали, що українці – борці. Цивілізований світ давав Україні 72 години. 72 години. І коли я приїхала в Німеччину, мені президент компанії, який 110 років, сказав, пані Аліна, якщо чесно, знаючи вас 25 років, я також думав, я помилявся, мені соромно, я помилявся, я також думав, що України не буде за 72 години. Але ви проявили таку мужність і такий патріотизм, і таку силу свою, що ми Схиляємо голови перед, вашим, перед вашою мужністю. А я говорю, а ми не одні, а в нас сусіди. І ваша допомога надзвичайна. Можливо, мій виступ сьогодні трошки емоційний, тому що сьогодні ми в Україні, ми боремося кожен на своєму місці, як можемо. Але повірте мені, як втомлюється мозок людський, 
від цього страшного звірства, яке сьогодні відбувається в Україні. Три речі, на які я хочу звернути вашу увагу. Те, що ми не могли мати, тому що я дитина радянського часу. І я говорю, мені боляче, тому що я, будучи відмінницею, з медалю закінчивши школу, я розумію, скільки брехні було в тій юності і в тому дитинстві. Будь ласка, плекайте свою мову, плекайте свою культуру, захищайте її, тому що код нації – це зброя. Однозначно. І на сьогоднішній момент я вважаю, що кожен з нас повинен думати, правильно формувати громадянське суспільство, правильно інформувати, тому що інформаційна війна – це дуже потужна, як ми побачили. І національна ідея, вона повинна бути на першому місці. Наші діти мають рости у вільних, незалежних, демократичних державах, такою, як є Україна, вона буде завтра, такою, як є Молдова і буде завтра. У нас спільне європейське майбутнє. Я дуже дякую вам за таке запрошення. І я сьогодні ще з маленькою, з малесенькою такою місією, але я хочу запросити Дмитра Лікарцева сюди, тому що знайомі не один рік проводили не один раз форуми спільні, так, ставайте коло мене, да, проводили не один раз спільні форуми, і ви знаєте, я не дзвонила Дмитру і не казала, Дмитро, допоможи. Якщо чесно, навіть не маю часу дзвонити і просити про допомогу. Дмитро позвонив і сказав, Аліна, у нас є допомога для вас. Я тобі дуже вдячна, Дмитро, тому що це безцінні речі, які пам'ятаються, я дякую за підтримку, і я сьогодні хочу передати грамоту, подяку від нашої громадської організації Міжнародного об'єднання жінок-українок, директору Національного конгресу українців в Молдові Дмитру Лікацеву за надання гуманітарної підтримки Збройним силам України та тимчасово переміщеним особам під час російських агресій у війні. Дмитро, разом до перемоги! Спасибі, спасибі. Люблю вас всіх. Ще раз слава Україні. Дякую дуже. Uh, є у нас... Do we have the connection with Anna? We don't yet. Okay, so uh, I'm giving the floor to Olga Kurlyantseva, uh, Head of Republican Association of Ukrainian Language Teachers, Promiň. Доброго дня, вельми шановний пане посол, шановні учасники сьогоднішнього заходу. Хочу зазначити, що на сьогоднішній день у Республіці Молдова проживають етноси різних національностей. Але найчисленнішим, найбільш стародавнім є, звичайно, українці. Саме українці зберігають та розвивають свою історію, традиції, культурну спадщину, будучи невід'ємною частиною нашої багатонаціональної країни. Підтримка миру та злагоди, інтеграція та адаптація етносів – одні з основних напрямів діяльності навчальних закладів з вивченням української рідної мови. З березня 2022 року у навчальних закладах нашої країни почали навчатися діти з України, які тимчасово проживали на території Республіки Молдова. Багато біженців з України, а також їхні діти – Перебуваючи на територію Республіки Молдова, стикаються з проблемою неволодіння державною мовою. Саме з такою проблемою стикаються майже всі українці, які прибувають на територію нашої країни. Крім того, у навчальній програмі є такі предмети, які не викладаються в українській школі. Наприклад, румунська мова та література, історія румун та всесвітня історія. Саме на таких уроках учні з України просто були присутні, не приймаючи участі в уроці. І, звичайно, вони не отримували оцінок. 
У процесі індивідуальної роботи з цією категорією учнів ми визначили, що проблема мовного бар'єру завдає перешкод легкій інтеграції українців у суспільство Республіки Молдова. Для вирішення цієї проблеми ми підключили місцеву владу та громадські організації. Було затверджено освітній проєкт «Дружнє партнерство. Запорука успішної інтеграції», запровадженням якого зайнялася республіканська громадська організація Асоціація вчителів української мови «Промінь». Наша асоціація була створена як добровільна незалежна республіканська громадська організація, яка об'єднує всіх вчителів української мови, які працюють в навчальних закладах Республіки Молдова. Асоціація співпрацює з усіма школами Республіки Молдова, де викладається українська мова як навчальна дисципліна. Також ми співпрацюємо і з іншими громадськими організаціями, діяльність яких спрямована на збереження та поширення української мови та культури на території Республіки Молдова. Цей навчальний проєкт «Дружнє партнерство. Запорука успішної інтеграції» є першим проєктом нашої громадської організації. Щоб полегшити інтеграцію біженців з України до молдовського суспільства, ми запланували в літній період організувати інтенсивні курси з вивчення державної мови для дітей та дорослих з України, які тимчасово проживають на півночі нашої республіки, а саме в Єдинецькому районі та муніципії Бельці. Період впровадження нашого проєкту – це липень-серпень 2022 року. Проєкт фінансується управлінням Верховного комісара ООН у справах біженців у партнерстві з громадською організацією «Правовий центр адвокатів». Для досягнення цілей нашого освітнього проєкту ми запланували проведення таких заходів. Інтенсивний курс вивчення румунської мови для біженців, які тимчасово проживають на території Єдинецького району. Наступний захід – це інтенсивний курс вивчення румунської мови для біженців, які тимчасово проживають на території муніципія Бельці. Наступна група наших курсантів, це були трішечки інші учні, це були учні-українці з українських сімей у Молдові, які навчаються у теоретичному ліцеї імені Василя Сухомлинського «Єдинець». Це були діти, які вдома з батьками спілкуються українською мовою і, звичайно, не мають можливості опанувати добре державну румунську мову. І саме на такому комунікативному курсі вони мали таку можливість. Наступний захід – це були інтерактивні тренінги з учасниками проєкту, з усіма, і з біженцями, і з учнями. Це були засідання комунікативного клубу, де біженці та учні українського ліцею спілкувалися один з одним, виявляли свою креативність, обговорювали подальшу співпрацю з метою покращення соціокультурної адаптації. Як ви вже зрозуміли, біженцям, вибачте, бенефіціарами цього проєкту були біженці з України і учні українського ліцею, які навчалися у теоретичному ліцею імені Василя Сухомлинського «Єдинець». Координатори проєкту забезпечили участь у всіх бенефіціарів у запланованих заходах, а голова Республіканської асоціації вчителів української мови провів моніторинг процесу реалізації курсів з вивчення румунської мови в Єдинецькому районі та муніципії Бельці. До роботи ми також залучили і психолога, який забезпечив психологічний комфорт учасникам протягом усього проєкту. І, звичайно, викладачі румунської мови доклали максимум зусиль, щоб учні, курсанти і дорослі, і шкільного віку опанували якомога краще державну румунську мову. Після закінчення проєкту. Біженці з України, які тимчасово проживають на території Республіки Молдова, отримають базові знання державної мови для успішної інтеграції до шкільного суспільства, а їхні батьки зможуть легко інтегруватися в молдовське суспільство з подальшим працевлаштуванням. Учні українського ліцею 
покращать свои знания с навчальної дисципліни румунська мова та література с метою підвищення якості знань та подальшої інтеграції. Беручи участь в інтерактивних тренінгах учні з України та учні українського походження Молдови стануть толерантними один до одного, отримують додаткову інформацію про культурні цінності Молдови та України, налагодять дружнє партнерство та набудуть навичок волонтерства у суспільстві. Звичайно, ми не плануємо зупинитися на цьому. Ми плануємо продовжити роботу з вивчення румунської мови біженцями з України та учнями української національності. По-перше, наша ініціативна група, яка складається з волонтерів, членів нашої республіканської громадської організації, планує продовжити засідання інтерактивного клубу, де будуть брати участь і біженці, і учні українського ліцею. Крім того, адміністрація ліцею імені Василя Сухомлинського призначить з нового навчального року факультативний курс вивчення державної мови учнями української національності. І також ми звернулися з листом з заявою, до керівництва управління Верховного комісара ООН у справах біженців з проханням організувати другий етап інтенсивних курсів вивчення державної мови біженцями Єдинецького району та муніципія Більці. Ми плануємо розширити діяльність нашого проєкту і хочемо організувати ще один інтенсивний курс для біженців, які тимчасово проживають в Онгенському районі. Таким чином ми знаємо, що буде де вирішено проблему мовного бар'єру серед учнів з українських сімей, а біженці з України, які тимчасово проживають на території Республіки Молдова, зможуть легко інтегруватися до молдовського суспільства. Я вам дякую за увагу. Дякую дуже. Маємо зв'язку з Анною? Маємо зв'язку з Анною. Дякую. The next speaker that we are going to be communicating with uh, will be, uh, once again I will represent her, uh, Anna Lubima. She is head of the International Cooperation Department of Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce. She will be with us online in a minute. Anna, hello, the floor is yours. Anna, sorry, we do not hear you. Sorry, we do not hear you. Do you have your microphone on? Do you hear us? Can you hear? Шановні колеги, о, ми вас чуємо. Чудово. Доброго дня, шановні колеги, шановні партнери та учасники такого важливого заходу. Від імені Торгово-промислової палати України та президента Геннадія Чижикова я хотіла б привітати та подякувати за запрошення, підкреслити важливість проведення таких заходів і важливість обговорення питань постороннього співробітництва навіть в такі складні часи. І ми всі знаємо, що Україна та Молдова завжди були дружніми народами і на нинішньому етапі в етапі історії наші народи вирішують схожі завдання – євроінтеграція та посилення обороноздатності. І Україна в цій війні несе, ми всі вважаємо, дуже тяжку нішу, тому що це війна не України з Росією, це війна двох цивілізацій. Ми на даний момент відстоюємо демократичні цінності та нормальний режим в світі. І економічні виклики на шляху до членства в Європейський Союз у нас наразі подібні. І наша бізнес-спільнота інтегрується в європейський простір. І нам дається це краще, тому що ми почали цю дорогу раніше і вже як півроку 
ми пришвидшуємо цей процес. І для частини підприємців це не стало проблемою, оскільки Європейський Союз є ключовим торговельним партнером і за угодою про асоціації вже налагоджено численні партнерства. Проте ускладнена війною логістика, експорт, виробництво і кадровий відтік та нові бізнес-процеси стали справжнім викликом для багатьох бізнесів і вистоїло 60% малого та середнього бізнесу і станом на липень оптимізм щодо майбутніх економічних очікувань та купівельні настрої споживачів зростають. І це жахливо прикро, але українці навчилися жити, працювати, воювати і робити бізнес водночас. І ми вже точно знаємо, що дивимося із Молдовою в одному напрямку. В напрямку європейських демократичних цінностей і вільного ринку. І це дуже надійний фундамент для співпраці. Ми щиро вдячні Молдові за підтримку і прихисток для наших родин, за сприяння релокації бізнесу участь у адаптації інфраструктури, зокрема залізниці до потреб української сторони. Молдова є одним з ключових регіональних партнерів України. І Молдова та Україна до війни перетнули рівень товарообігу в 1 мільярд доларів. А загальний товарооборот, тобто мається на увазі і товари, і послуги, між Україною та Республікою Молдова за результатами 2021 року показали показники зростання на 30% за рік. І зараз наші зусилля як бізнес-організації спрямовані на максимальне сприяння діловим контактам для відновлення активної співпраці в актуальних умовах. І раніше основними українськими товарами, які поставлялися до Молдови, були вироби з металу, електричні машини, паливно-мастильні матеріали, продовольча і фармацевтична продукція, продукція деревообробної та будівельної галузі. І імпортували в Україну з Молдови продукцію рослинництва, вино та тиловий спирт. Зараз ситуація змінюється і за результатами року ми бачимо, що основний акцент співпраці змістився в транспорт і логістику. І Молдова стає для нас важливим логістичним хабом. Саме в сфері транспорту, інновацій, оборонній сфері, енергетиці ми особливо цікаві одне одному. І дуже цікавий для нас, як палати, досвід молдовської ТПП з організації мереж кваліфікаційних центрів. До речі, минулого року ми спільно запустили та реалізували такий проект і вивчаємо досвід один одного. І плануємо втілити схожий проект уже найближчим часом. Після війни модернізація освітньої та професійної галузі неминуче, тому ми розуміємо, що це дійсно актуально. І як і інтеграція законодавства та е, транскордонних процесів. Динаміку нашої торгівлі визначає не війна, а активність бізнесу у створенні нових партнерств. І тут ми сповнені дійсно оптимізму, і як великий 35-мільйонний ринок із активним населенням, ми готові працювати далі. Працюємо разом для запуску нової сторінки нашої співпраці. І е, користуючись можливістю, хочу підкреслити хороші відносини і подякувати посольствам, посольству Молдови в Україні і посольству України Молдові за активну е, співпрацю і участь у всіх процесах е, без е, такої щоденної роботи наших посольств, особливо послів, не було б такого рівня нашої співпраці. І також хотіли подякувати нашим партнерам Торгово-промисловій палаті Молдові за активність і втілення всіх наших спільних проєктів. І побажати всім гарної роботи на цьому форумі і гарного дня. Бережіть себе, безпеки вам і здоров'я. Дякуємо, Анна. Uh, I would like to thank all the participants of uh, the second discussion panel, both the speakers and the listeners. Uh, this ends the, the second panel, and once again I invite on the stage the head of National Congress of Ukrainians in Moldova, Dmitry Lekartsev. Дорогі друзі, дорогі учасники панелі, шановні гості, на цьому ми завершуємо нашу офіційну частину Ukrainian Day in Moldova. Я 
Дійсно, хочу вам всім подякувати. Подякувати вам за вашу роботу, подякувати вам за вашу підтримку, подякувати всім нашим друзям і партнерам, котрі з України змогли сьогодні приїхати і підтримати нас тут, на цьому заході. Я впевнений, що нас очікує ще багато спільної, нелегкої роботи. Але поруч з Україною, поруч з українським народом, плічо в пліч, ми все поборемо. Дякую вам за підтримку ще раз і за те, що ви сьогодні присутствуєте на цьому заході. Для нас це дуже важливо. Зараз я би хотів маленьке така частина нагородження. Ми би хотіли ці подяки передати нашим партнерам, тим, хто сьогодні приймав участь у наших офіційних панелях. І перше – це посольство України в Республіці Молдова. Дякую, пане Марко. Ми хочемо подякувати нашим партнерам Peace of Wins Japan. Peace of Wins, Рей, please. Це організація, наші партнери, завдяки котрим ми працюємо, вони підтримують наш центр допомоги біженцям. Ми їм дуже вдячні за те, що вони настільки надійні. Будь ласка. Дякую дуже багато. Чим твоє унік кризі? Добре вперед. Я хочу подякувати пану Ефросу і взагалі центру, тому що ми разом, дуже багато моментів було робочих, котрі вирішувалися, і ще будуть такі моменти, над котрими ми зараз працюємо. Я сподіваюся, що наступні гуманітарні вантажі з вашою допомогою будуть продовжувати рухати в Україну. International Organization for Migration, IOM. Thank you for your support. І наші друзі Ізраїд є у залі? Пані Присяжнюк? Не, напевно, вийшла, передамо пізніше. Асоціація української молоді Молдова «Злагода». Роман очолює організацію молодіжну нашу. Роман є у нас координатор центру, який щодня працює разом поруч з біженцями. О, Ізраїд. Пані Олена, будь ласка. Пані Олена з Вінниці, котра також біженка приїхала сюди і одразу вмикнулася у всі процеси. Дякую за процес. Нова пошта Молдова. Вже майже 5 місяців пліч-о-пліч разом з новою поштою ми потихеньку надсилаємо гуманітарні вантажі. Вам дуже-дуже велика дякую. Асоціація вчителів української мови «Промінь» пані Ольга. Міністрі облаборів і соціальної протекції. Yes, I just missed my last remark to to say there is no winners from the war, and we have to be winners from the situation. We're not a poor country; we're a country lacking resources, but we're rich in friends, like you and our partners. Thank you. No, and the final diploma, Pani Elena Skomorokova. Jewish community. Це наші також партнери, котрі дуже багато працювали в рамках кризи і продовжують працювати. Ми їм вдячні.
United Nations High Commission for Refugees. From Alex. Да. Uh, Репрезентант за Промо Лекс. Немай. Окей, okay, потім передамо. Солідаріті фонд in Молдова. Також. Юс Ембасі в Молдова. Угу. Ти можеш читати сама. Чим тут дріб Алло Кацілор? Okay. And be an angel. Не. Друзі, ми обов'язково передамо подяки нашим партнерам. Зараз я хочу ще раз вам всім подякувати за вашу роботу, за вашу діяльність. І сказати, що на цій високій ноті ми завершуємо нашу офіційну частину. Потім е всі події переходять на вулицю. І я дуже сподіваюся, що сьогодні весь день ви будете знаходитися тут з нами, тому що дуже багато буде е, різноманітних заходів для дітей окремо. Буде фестиваль борща, буде чудовий концерт на, на 17 годину. Ми вас всіх запрошуємо бути сьогодні з нами поруч цілий день. Дякую.